And my cup. Shit, we live yeah. now. Hey, before we get started on these topics, did y'all see that Avery Johnson comment about, yeah, about I, them I playing? Like what did he say? I missed it. That uh, uh, Bulls didn't have a chance. They could bribe me, couldn't stop Tim Duncan. Don't know. Oh, you mean if they were the ninety nine joint? Yeah. Uh, with uh, David Robinson, like like the Bulls didn't have a chance to beat them. Like, get out of here, man. Like, they had a the Bulls would have beat them, but it would have went seven. Oh, uh, it would have been a grind. Because uh yeah. Bush or, or, or Longwood, none of them had nothing for the Admiral and uh Tim Duncan. Yeah. Yeah, I can't, yeah. I can't find it, man. Yeah, I that's basically what he said. Tough. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to read it out to y'all real quick. This is from Avery Johnson. He said, even though Michael is incredible, unbelievable, the Bulls just wasn't going to have an answer for Tim Duncan and David Robinson. I know Dennis Rodman was a good defender, but Dennis wouldn't have been able to slow down Tim Duncan, and nobody on the roster could guard David. And that was, that was Avery Johnson's comments on if they would have played the 99 season. Well, who I think Robin could have slowed him. Would have guarded Michael, and that's why I said I just think they gave no respect to Robin. Like Robin, I guess they was going to put, completely uh, stop him. He could slow him down, though. I guess they was going to try to put Mario Ellie on him. <laughs> at that point, on, my, my, my Del thing Negro, is, but Benny Del Negro, who? like this was my whole thing with the matchup. The matchup was Avery Johnson and Ron Harper. That's the exactly. matchup right there. Like Ron Harper going to kill. I'm not saying Ron Harper going to put up twenty points a game or nothing like that. But they're gonna exploit got the that. Yeah, they're gonna exploit that. Well, he should have, anyways. Yeah. But you. But that's what they. That's what they did with Utah. Yeah. We talking about with John Stockton, or, or Jeff Horner said mm-hmm. both. Mm. <laughs> so they would take. They would take Harper and post him, or they would take MJ down there and post him. Yeah. They would put. They would put somebody. They would get a mismatch, and they would go down there and post uh, uh, Stockton or uh, Horner. Check was the main one. We'll put poor old John Stock. Y'all see where he said they, they probably would try to push Sean Elliott on. You see where yeah, they, they had asked John Stockton who who in today's game most resembles your game? He said Giannis Antetokounmpo. John Stockton. Yeah, he did. He was I'm, joking though. He was joking. Yeah, he was joking though, but I was like, man, they wild. But anyway, everybody we appreciate y'all coming on through today to be on the yes, game. Sir. I got the crew with me today. I got my guy Ralph. I got my guy sure. B Legend. He cheesing hard. I got my guy B Legend. So I'm, I'm, I'm laughing at what y'all say. Uh, I got my guy B Legend. Of course, my guy Daniel down there at the bottom. How everybody living, man? Everybody Gucci. Just trying to make it through, bro. Just trying to make it through. We got so, a sunny day, so I ain't complaining. Hey, man. We, we this is the first time we done had one of these in a little bit. But you know, everybody got their you know drink of choice. I got my Duce. Ralph got his wine. B Legend got his. You know, Ciroc oh, down there at the bottom. What you got today, Daniel? Man, I guess I gotta go grab another bottle. I got my water right now. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know it was wine down Wednesday, bro. Wine down Wednesday. <laughs> I got a couple bottles though. Hey man, we we, 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 might, we might have to take a brief pause and let you go get that bottle. But you I know, got one of these, man. What what? Oh, oh, you got, oh he, he bought it. Okay, he got the Michael Cuban Jordan. Jordan. He, he got the over. Cuban joint oh, over here. Oh, and just resembled it all the way. <laughs> Next thing you know, he's gonna spark it up and be like Red Arbok. He said he don't want to work. Hey, I, hey, hey, I like that shirt, by the way, Q. Uh, yeah, appreciate that. Appreciate that. Shout out to Black Vultures. But uh, hey, since you brought up that that um Red Arbok. Uh, I want to talk about that Paul Pierce too before we get off the uh, get off the air today. He's a LeBron oh, hater, dog. So he did. That's all I'm saying. Say. 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 Yeah. So let's let's get right on into it, man. Of course, you know <laughs> episodes nine and ten of the Last Dance uh, came on Sunday, but well, Sunday, you know, recap the whole series off. So, B, you a Chicago native, you a Chicago guy. What was your thoughts on episodes nine and ten? Uh, I mean, you know, I liked them. I mean, I definitely liked them. I just think overall. My whole thing about this whole documentary was just the fact that, you know, it showed the type of player that, that Michael was from the standpoint of his tenacity, his desire, his passion, how hard he was on his teammates, all of that. All that made logical sense. But the thing that I wish that they would have spent more time on is, like, how he dominated the game. Like, you know. From dominated. His, from you know, from his if, if you listen to what a lot of people were saying, or even the things that they weren't saying, just 
in the documentary, just what you hear through the lead, you know, you always talk about his first step. He would talk about his footwork. He would talk about his ability. If you, if you remember, I think it was in uh, episode 10 when he was talking about uh, Brian Russell that was defending him. He was he was talking about the fact that he, he knew that he always had that, that Brian Russell could never defend him because he would guard him on his toes. Mm -hmm. So he knew that all he had to do was pump fake him. And he yeah, just drop around. He, 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 there, there was nothing that he can do. He can never guard him. So I wish they would have took more time to focus more on, you know, what he actually did in the game and how he how he viewed the game, how he studied the game, and how he took what he studied and applied that to the game. They talked about what motivated him. Okay, well, Carl Malone got the MVP, so that's what he needed in order to, you know, propel himself or to get himself motivated. That's fine. But how did he do what he did within the game? And I think that's that's the biggest thing I think that was missing from, you know, from the from the documentary. But overall, I mean, I mean, it, I mean, it's what 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 else did you expect? I mean, is it the fact that he edited it? You know, he had the final say so on what was in it, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, he pretty much knew how I was going to play. Yeah. So a good point you, that you brought up. So you you more so wanted to see like Jordan's preparation for yeah. the games more so the behind the scenes stuff you wanted to see like jordan's focus and like what he's looking for in matchups uh -huh. how to exploit like yeah. pretty much film study that's what you wanted to see like yeah. what yeah. was jordan's mentality going into these games what was he looking for yeah because you know when you, even when you look at today, today's players you know you know they talk about film study watching the players and things like that but you got to understand that teams were trying to prepare to stop this guy and they couldn't even stop him. I mean, regardless of what they tried to do, they couldn't even stop him. You, know, you, you see all these different videos where you got Gary Payton trying to guard him and this and that. He's just getting yeah. Gary Payton. He's just yeah. like a little, like a little road. You know? <laughs> um, or you look at his cop, he's like, Gary Payton could guard me. You know, and just say, well, Michael, why do you say that? You know, why, why would you say he can't guard you? And then he'll say, well, let me, let me explain to you why. You know, mm, and you. if you break that down, you're then they what he's talking about. You know, so it kind of so it brings another element into his whole thought process. I mean, it's just like it's just like with LeBron. The one thing you got to give LeBron credit for is that LeBron has the ability to come down and and he knows what defenses are doing before they even do them. You know, because he's seen it all. So the same thing. I think that that would that would have more icing on the cake. You know, for me. Yeah, I, I get what you're saying. You wanted to see like his thought process you. before the game. Uh, tell tell Ralph, I'm gonna let him out and come back in. So, with that being said, Daniel, I'm gonna go back to you. What was your thoughts on episodes nine and ten? I mean, similar to what B Legend said. I mean, because from the game aspect, he's showing us stuff that we already knew. I mean, you know what I'm saying? It didn't bring anything new to the light. I'm like you though. I like to hear the backstories, similar to what I sent you today about the Gilbert Arenas versus Kobe. I like those backstories, but I agree with him on I want to see their mentality, their thought process, their preparation on how they go into the game because us as fans, we can never fathom what they go through or how they prepare. So it's good for them to explain that, especially after the fact, you're not giving up your secrets once you retire. So I'd like yeah. to see that. But nine and ten, I mean you already knew what was coming because most of the backstory that you didn't know came in the previous episodes so the last ones was just yeah stuff you already seen okay. ralph can you hear me now i can bro okay well what was your thoughts on episodes nine and ten that's kind of i was going to kind of say what legend kind of said not all of it but as far as the dominance of michael jordan i think that's what i i kind of appreciated also as far as because we've already known what we know about michael and what he did but just the pure dominance i feel like Michael was what LeBron is right now. He just dominated the league. It was Michael versus everybody else. Mm. And I feel like the respect that he's gotten from everything that other players have said about him, except the few that have whatever they have to say about Mike that says he's not the GOAT. But I just feel like the overall dominance is what I've loved about the whole entire documentary. What, what I got from it, man, is that, and we're going to probably talk about this a little bit later, is the Scottie Pippen aspect of it. Well, two two things. For one, I want to know how y'all feel about this. I I like trust me, like I like the documentary. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. I just didn't care too much of them going from her all the way back to <laughs> nineteen eighty seven and then yeah. jumping back to nineteen ninety like all that time jump. I just feel like 
they should have won in chronological order so you can yeah. show the, the maturation of Jordan and how he got to the 98 point. So you can see, damn, he done been through this, this, and this. So you see why his thought process is the way it is. All that jumping back and forth, I think it just kind of like muddled everything. Like yeah, I think it kind of like muddled everything up a little bit. But to me, I and I want to see what y'all think about this. It showed me that Michael would have probably won maybe three championships, right? But I don't think he would have got to six without Scottie Pippen. Like I, I think it showed that Scottie Pippen is a lot more valuable than what people actually give him credit what? for. He would. And, you know, everybody says Scottie Pippen is a great number two. Yeah, but I don't think they understood how valuable he was to Jordan because Pippen, the way he played, allowed Jordan to be who he was. You know what I I'm agree. saying? Like it, it took so much pressure off of Jordan where he knew when it come down to it, I'm the. This is my team. I ain't got to worry about fighting with nobody. Like this, this is my squad. Y'all know who the alpha is. And then like game six of 1998. Uh -huh. I'm gonna get y'all thought process on this too. Uh, it showed that that Scottie Pippen was out there with a bad back. It was one particular play that I paid attention to. It was when Karl Malone was on the post and they doubled him with Scottie Pippen and Dennis Rodman. And Pippen stole the ball and he could like barely like stand up uh -huh. after he stole. And that's like. Do y'all think that if Scott, if the if the Jazz had somehow won Game Six and went to Game Seven, if Scottie Pippen didn't play, do y'all think Jordan would have still been able to pull out a Game Seven? Daniel, I'll throw it to you first. I st I can't say no, and the only reason why is just no man talking. But you got it. <laughs> it's just like it's like asking. I mean, yeah. to me, it's still you know I'm the Kobe guy, but I'm just like. Bro, Jordan will shoot fifty shots if he got to shoot fifty shots. <laughs> that game. Yeah, yeah, he's he not. Crazy, and then he would have scored seventy. You know what I'm saying? I mean, he might not have scored seventy, but he would at least have sixty. Absolutely. You know what I mean? So I mean, that's a, that's a no brainer. Yeah. But I agree with you though. I think Pippen was way more important because we know we know that uh, Michael Jordan can strap up, but it's also good that when you come out of the game, you got somebody else that can go strap up the best player. That way, when you come out, you don't have to feel like. Well, when I come out, he's going to go kill. You yeah. know what I mean? So Yeah. Yeah, I, I think, man, I think this film now, don't get me wrong, they, ESPN got Scottie Pippen ranked as the 21st greatest player of all time. I don't agree with that shit. But I think I, th I think it just showed that, that Scottie Pippen was way more to value, way more valuable to, to Michael Jordan than a lot of people realize. So um, with that being said, do y'all think this whole documentary painted Scottie Pippen in a negative light? Ralph, I'm going to throw it down there to you first. No. I don't. I don't see why. I mean, why? Why would you say that? Because they showed a lot of Scottie Pippen clips of him at the migraine, and then when he didn't want to go back in the game, what was that? Be ninety five, ninety four. Uh, I think it was the migraine. No, 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 no. The two, the, the Tony uh, Kuko shot. I was ninety five. What? Okay, 95. ninety five. So, so I don't it, know if that makes it. I don't. Know. Because. I don't, that because. doesn't make him seem negative, but that's the only thing. The migraine thing didn't really. I like what Rodman said. You, everybody knows Rodman didn't give a fuck, so he was like, <laughs> "I wish Scotty didn't give a fuck like me, because you wouldn't care." He said, "You out here to live life." He Rodman. <clears throat> I saw a clip, but anyway, Rodman did everything that he wanted to do, and he didn't worry about what everybody else thought about it. At the end of the day, he got to live his life. He was like, "This this many years later, Scotty Pippen shouldn't feel some type of way about doing that." And you are, he already admitted in the documentary he wouldn't have changed it. So what's the point of feeling bad about it? Or what's yeah. the point of worrying about what people think about it? Yeah. Well, but what about you, B? You think it painted Scotty in a, in a negative light? Because, you know, the report was, I don't know if y'all seen it on the page, where he was unhappy of how he got depicted in the documentary. You know, I heard that. Um, you know, again, you got to look at it for what it is, right? I mean, you know, the documentary was about Michael and, and, it, and it was what it was. I, I don't really look at it as a negative light. I mean, I just think that, you know, he was just talking about different aspects and different things that were happening during that time, during that tenure. Now, the one thing I did hear about today um, was they were talking about what Horace, when Horace said, well, why would you bring up Scotty and you know, him not going in the game? Michael wasn't even playing at that time. But people feel to realize that, you know, Michael was still in contact with the team at that time. You know, he was still communicating with the team. He, yeah. you know, he had still, you know, he had still gone to a couple of games. I mean, if you even remember, you know, he was, you know, going back with the team. He was practicing with the team. He was still interacting with the team. So, um, so he still had some type of connection. Um, 
I mean, I, I don't view it that way. I, I, I think it's almost to a point sometimes I think that people are just trying to find something negative to say about the document. Mm. Um, you know, and I'm, I'm not saying that that's the case. Sometimes it comes across that way because it's like, instead of looking at, you know, how good it was, they're trying to figure out, they're trying to point out all the negative aspects of it, you know. Um, it, you know, did, did Michael have to talk about the migraine? It was part of the Pistons. It was part of what happened. So, yeah, I think he did. Did he have to necessarily talk about Scotty not going back in the game? Probably not. But how would that one thing? That was part. That was part of Scotty. I mean, that's what he did. So he went. He told you he wouldn't have changed it anyway. So what difference did it make? You know? I I think the whole Scotty Pippen thing. I I mean, I could be wrong. I think it was put in there to show how the Bulls needed a closer, and they wanted Scotty Pippen to be that closer, and they obviously couldn't go to him in the clutch and they needed that Jordan type of player. So I think Jordan put it in there to show like they needed me and I wasn't there for him. Um but I also think but I also feel like I wonder if you go back to I think it was like episode one or two, Jordan has no problem telling you that without Scottie Pippen there is no Michael Jordan. Exactly. Exactly. So I also, exactly. He gives him I also exactly. feel that he was trying to somewhat paint a picture of how important Scotty was. You know, to the success of of the Bulls, and his whole as he as Michael was, you know, communicating about communicating about his his growth and his maturation. You know, from the Celtics to the Pistons to the Six Rings. You know, his Robin Pippen, he went through his trials and tribulations too. So even though the documentary wasn't about Pippen, he was talking about some of the things that Pippen did. Because Pippen, without Pippen, there was no joy. One one of the things that shocked me the most, and Daniel, I'm gonna get you on this, uh, is at the end of episode ten. Uh, B, I, I know you're from Chicago, so you might have known this. That Jerry Reinsdorf said that they offered Phil the opportunity to come back, but Phil Jackson declined the opportunity mm-hmm. to come back. Probably was so, tired. You say he was tired. Tired of dealing with Jordan. Jordan dealing with Jordan's a lot. Jordan's a great player, but dealing with him is a lot. So it's still about Kobe. So you you saying that Phil Jackson didn't want to come back because he just didn't want to deal with the the Jordan? I, I think I, it was management. That's the the key reason. But I'm just saying I know that dealing with Jordan's a lot. Like the same way he talked about Kobe in his book. Like dealing with them type of players is a lot. So do you do y'all do y'all place more of the blame now that y'all know this on Phil Jackson, or do y'all still put it on management because Phil had the opportunity to keep the thing going, and Phil could have said, "Look, I'll come back, but you got to bring Scotty and Mike back." So do y'all feel like it's, it's more on Phil Jackson now, or is it still on more management right now? What you think, Daniel? I mean, to answer your question, I was going to bring up the importance of Dennis Rodman. I know we were talking about Scotty and Jordan on the three, second three-peat, but yeah. you look at when they didn't have horse, how bad they looked, and then when they got Rodman, that filled that void. But uh, that was for the last topic. But uh, as far as – now, I remember this because, of course, everybody grew up loved Jordan. I mean, Kobe was my guy from the time he came in the league, but he wasn't – he didn't come in like Jordan, you know what I yeah. mean? So, <clears throat> I still blame it on management only because it's still – no matter what you did to try to fix a wound, the wound was inflicted by you when you decided you wanted to break up the team before the season even started. So, once you do all that, I feel a type of way at that point. So, why I don't care what you say now. If I, I'm just done with the situation. You know what I mean? Because I remember hearing that. I remember December came around two months after the season should have started. Michael Jordan talking about he's contemplating coming back if they start the season before January. Then I remember hearing Phil <clears throat> was offered to come back, but he said you got to bring back Scotty and Jordan. I don't know if they agreed. <laughs> I don't think he wanted to. I think I think what he was was like, I take Phil back. I don't want to take back Jordan too, though. You know? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what what you, what you think about that? B? Do you think they was just over the whole Jordan stage of of the Chicago Bulls? Like, because me personally, uh, Jordan at the end, you know, he said if he would have came back, then you know, Steve Kerr would have came back. Scottie Pippen might have came back. Me personally, I don't think it was going to work because Jerry Reinsdorf brought up the point of financially, it was just not going to work because yeah. Jordan had just came off of what, 30, 36 mil? Uh-huh. So he going to come in with 40, and then Scottie Pippen's contract was up. You know he ain't taking no pay cut, so ain't no, no telling what he, took the pay cut. Yeah, so ain't no telling what he was about to come in. And then, you know, Steve Kerr and all the role players, so I don't think financially they would have been able to bring everybody back. 
So, B, what was your thoughts on when you found out that Steve, I mean, not Steve Kerr, but Phil Jackson had the opportunity? Do you put it on him or you put it on management? Uh, no, I still think it's management because I think that I think it's a combination of two things. I think it's it's the management. I think it is financial. Um, you know, because if you listen to what Phil Jackson said, he said that, no, I don't think it'll be good, you know, and that, that would be good for, for, for you and Jerry and me and Jerry. It, it, it would have just been too much, you know. I don't think Phil wanted to deal with that whole Jerry Krause thing. Uh, you know, because think about it. Jerry Krause had went out the year before, and they just in all that year, all you heard was that this was this was Phil's last year, this was Phil's last year. So that's all we heard. That's all we heard. And so so now Ryan Joff goes and he said, Okay, the heck with you, Jerry Krause. I'm 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 bringing Phil back. Now you got that issue. Now you got Phil and Krause, they going back and forth. Krause is pissed off at Ryan's over. Now, if I'm the owner, Krause would have just known, hey, I'm calling the shots. We wouldn't have had this issue anyway. Mm -hmm. So that's one aspect. Yep. The other aspect of it was, you know, what I always call, you know, you know, the greed factor. When you look at the old Chicago Stadium, when you look at the United Center, even after Jordan left, the United Center was sold out. Now think about this for a second. Jordan, before those last three years, he was only making five million a year in South. I think it may have went up to seven million, but I think it was only five million. He was making salary. Everything else was off. Of endorsements um, so they weren't paying nobody anything okay yeah, they were making yeah. all this money off the united said that's what made jordan come back and he wanted 30 million dollars because he was basically he built the united center and they were profiting off of that they weren't paying anybody now he could have went to bat for pippen and said give pippen some money but he also he also said it because Reinsdorf was very very clear about this and Jordan knew it and Pippen knew it and they all knew it. Don't sign the contract. Mm. That next contract, sign the contract. You know, you know I don't I don't tear a contract. So Reinsdorf never. Did. Now in today's world, that wouldn't have that wouldn't have, in today's world that would have never held. You know they would have had to rip the contract up and do it. But you would have had to pay Jordan thirty six, you know, forty million. You would have to pay. You had to pay Pippen. You didn't have a choice. Absolutely, yeah. yeah, yeah. You, you owed him. You had to pay him. So now you're probably in the twenty million dollar range with Pippen. Uh -huh. I, I don't remember what he got when he went to. Uh, when he I think left. he was right around twenty. Yeah, he, yeah. he left when he went down to uh, uh to yeah. Houston. His he last was, eight years, he made a hundred. I mean, his last eight years, he made uh seventy-seven million, I believe. His last. Yeah, year. I, think, I think it was about. I think it was about. You know, whatever it was, it was, it was some big number, right? It was so, five years, sixty-seven right. million. Okay, so you knew he was got to pay him some money. So you you look at that. That's over ten million. They had to pay Pippen. You're gonna have to pay D. Ryan. Now, you ain't got to pay him Pippen money, Jordan money, but you have to pay him. You know, cool coaches on the on the contract. And and again, that was your team. Everybody else was just role players. You could just feel mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Um, but I just think the money played a role, and I, I, I just don't think that Ronzo wanted to pay that money. And I think that he was at a point, hey, you know what, screw it. You know, uh, we'll just rebuild. But at the same time, he also said, well, I'll bring everybody else back. Uh, I'll bring, I bring Michael back, and I won't bring any, anybody else back, and we can just build around Michael. And that's when Michael looked and said, you know, all right. <laughs> yeah. So... So he was willing to pay Michael that money. He just wasn't willing to pay everybody else. Oh, he was going to pay Michael that money because he knew he was going to get that money back if he got Michael out there. Like, Michael yeah, going to get you. you yeah, but Michael going to get you. Play Michael, and you can build around Michael. See, they looked at everybody else as just fillings. Yeah. Because who yeah. wouldn't want to go play? At that time, who wouldn't want to go play for Michael? That's what well, I was telling people, though, about the contract. They were talking about how dumb uh, the seven years, 18 million was. And I was like, Jordan's second contract was just eight years, twenty five million. It wasn't a lot of money. Yeah. Wasn't money. They wasn't paying money. nobody. He didn't, Mike wasn't making no money. He didn't make any money, salary money, until the second three. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. He was. Kareem was only making three million. He was the highest paid player. That's, that's and just crazy. Ryan kept him on the payroll and was paying him with the White Sox, and he was still making the same money. He was still making that five million dollars a year. Yeah. He didn't make any money until 96. 
So that three years, he made over ninety million dollars, about a hundred million dollars. But before that, big. so it was the money, man. The money played a role in that too, and I don't think Rise of Wood's been there. No, I don't think, and, and I don't know if y'all seen this. I heard this, but the ironic part about it all is that. Now Jordan is worth more than Jerry Reinsdorf is now. Uh, that's, that's, the, that's the funny part about it. I was, that Jordan's worth more absolutely. than him now. That's just crazy. But man, that's so, exactly, yeah. you know, you got NBA facilities starting to open up, you know, uh, uh, California. Uh, I think Texas, oh, I think Houston opened up their facility. So to me, it seems like the NBA season is about to open up in, in probably mid-July, whatever the case may be. So, Ralph, I'm going to throw it over to you first. If the NBA season resumes, who you got winning the title? Because everybody should be healthy right now. Why are you asking me this? Here we go. Here we go. So, I, hey, since I can't pick LeBron, I'm going with the Clippers. Just because I can't pick LeBron. You, you can pick LeBron. You can pick LeBron if you no. want to. No, 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 don't worry about it. Nope. So, so when, when the, if the season picks up mid-July, which there were some reports about that on Bleacher Report that the, um, the the owners are thinking about picking it up in mid-July, you got the Clippers, even though they were fully healthy the last time they played the Lakers and lost, you still got the Clippers beating the Lakers. After the Lakers lost, what, the first two times they finally got a win? Congratulations. What, what does that mean? In 19- Congratulations. Don't, don't do it. Don't. Thanks, D-Legend. Don't do it, bro. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm just saying, like, in, 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 the, in the last dance documentary that like, we just talked about, in 1998, the Chicago Bulls lost to Utah Jazz during that season, and they end up beating them in the finals. So what does that mean they lost to them in, in the regular season? I don't want to talk about it. I did pick LeBron. I picked the Clippers. You you all right, you picked the Clippers. Okay, so recipe and don't count. You bet you bet like Paul Pierce, boy. Daniel, so if the season re- was to resume, who who you got winning it? I'm I'm torn for real. Uh if the season had stayed how it was, I think the Clippers would have won it. With this, I think LeBron looked at this because you know he's it was reports that he still was having issues with his groin. So this gave him time to let his groin heal up. But you'll never know when it can flare up. But I know LeBron, he's probably like, Yeah, they think everybody else is gonna come back, they might not be in game tech. <laughs> I'm doing all this extra stuff. So, <laughs> yeah, he's like, I am. I'm going to use this to my advantage. And if he has his team on the same thing, this will help them. Now, do I want to see it? No. So what I'm still going to say, look, this is going in. No. <laughs> nah, y'all but, are killing me right now. No. And, and I'm a Laker fan. But if, if the Lakers win, I'm not going to be surprised. I just feel like this yeah. something, especially with this documentary dropping, yeah. Uh, he's like, yeah. I, he feels some type of way. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so before before I let you go, B, I won't piggyback off of Daniel. What what Daniel just said, I I think the documentary is motivating LeBron more than ever had because LeBron is in a lose lose situation right now. If he if he doesn't win a title, see, told you he ain't nowhere close to Jordan. But then if he wins a title, oh, he's just trying to get closer to Jordan to go conversation. So he he's in a lose lose situation right now. So it, he ain't got. So at this point, it's just like fuck it. I'm just gonna go ball then. But B. <sighs> the season was to resume. <laughs> Man, who you who, who you got winning the title? B. If the season was to resume, well, you know, everybody, everybody's healthy. Everybody's mm-hmm. healthy. Um, I think it'd be very interesting. I'd be more curious to see how they would how they would do it. Meaning, how they're going to take you know, like your six, seven, and eight. Are you gonna play it out? Are you gonna finish the season, mm-hmm. or are you gonna have a, like a, uh, um, you know, like a, you know, playoff of six, seven, and eight, one game series to see who gets in? You know how that how that plays out, um, you know. But again, I just think it's really, really interesting because everybody's healthy. But the biggest thing out of all the teams is the chemistry, mm-hmm. you know, because they ain't play, you know, so they got to. So your first series are gonna really be. Those are, be, those are going to be chemistry games. So that's true. That's true. So talent on its own is going to basically get you through. You basically, yeah. now, now are the Clippers second or third in the West right now? I, I, third. Third. I, I was going to say I think they was third, third. before the, when everything shut down. See, because that's a problem for the Clippers because the Clippers are going to have to go through. Uh, whoever's in six, and then they have to go through, which I think is OKC, which they shouldn't have a problem with. Uh, and then they got to see Houston. 
and then they got to feed them boys. So they they gonna have a harder route. The Clippers will have a harder route to get to the finals than the boys would. You know, so yeah, I mean, you yeah, already know my answer. You know, I got to go with the perfect go. I mean, it's, I mean, we don't. See? There, there, there is nothing. Oh, oh my God! Yeah, I can't hear. I can't hear a Chicago native say this. So he's gonna act like he didn't just say that. But you have to see now. Now remember. Now see now. Remember. Now I want you to go back and remember. What did I say, Q? What you know? You said, "Well, you from Chicago? How 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 do you root? How are you not rooting for your home team? What did I tell you way back when? I didn't root for them because of what ownership? Mm-hmm. Right." And this right. is, and that documentary showed you exactly what I'm talking about. That's why I didn't root. That's why I don't root for them. Mm-hmm. And even when the Lakers played them and the Bulls beat them, I was rooting for the Lakers, even though I wanted Mike on them to win. The Lakers were my team, and they won. Gotcha. When smooth Sam Perkins hit that three, and they who'd he go to? North Carolina. Okay. When, they won, <laughs> when they won Game One, you know I got all kind of flack, but you know I was like it's the Lakers, but then. You know, they made the switch. They put they put Pip on, and yeah, it was over. You know? Yeah, they, the, uh, Scotty Pippen changed that whole series. He should have won finals MVP. But no, no. In, in the Western, <laughs> in Western Conference finals, I mean, the Western Conference is the Lakers. Lakers got the one seed. Clippers got the two. Denver okay. three. Utah okay. four. Yeah. OKC five. Houston so, six. Dallas seven. Memphis eight. So the Clippers might change your answer, legend. Okay. So, okay. I, but, I still, but I, still, I still think the Clippers got the hardest route to get there. And uh, I, you know, I got to go to like it's a chemistry thing, though. If you know they come out, man, and they ain't got no chemistry, man, I believe that the season would not have uh, ended with this corona thing. You know, the Lakers had their thing going on, the Clippers, you don't know what the hell they was doing, they were sometimes they were off, <laughs> but you know, five games back, you know, they weren't gonna catch the Lakers, that wasn't gonna happen. Nah. So now Lakers go in, they play somebody like the Pelican first round. You got a young Zoe. You got a young Zion. You got a Brandon Ingram trying to make a point. Do they win a game in that series? Well, you got yeah, to see they're going uh, to win a game now. There's no question. Zion, you got to shake Zion's in, though. Speak, he, speaking yeah, of that, he did, you, he did, the did you see where uh, the Pelicans were petitioning to the NBA to let them open their facilities just for Zion? Did you yep. see that? Mm-hmm. Really? Because you yeah, didn't want they to know Sean Kemp. You saw the Sean Kemp uh, when they locked out. He was 285, and when he came back, he was 319 Jeez. when they locked out. Yeah. They they got Zion. They 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 scared for Zion, man. And if you have a player like that where you scared that he's going to gain so much weight, I think that's a problem. But yeah, you are – so what, what about the East? Is, is everybody pretty much cool on the on the Bucks coming at the East? I am. I am. You, you uh, say yeah, B? The only contender besides them is uh, Boston. Boston. I do like Toronto's defense. That, and I th- that's what I, I say. say. I think, I think back in March, if you still got the paper or this, the film, I think I did pick Toronto, but not now. Not with the chemistry gone. But back then, I think I picked Toronto over Boston. Yeah, right. Right now, now East is Milwaukee one, Toronto two, Boston three, Miami four. Seven. I mean, not seventy six. Orlando's Pacers. in the playoffs, by the way. Oh, yeah, pa- like Pacers at five. Seventy six is all the way down at six. Brooklyn at seven, and Orlando at eight. Again, see, Ben Simmons was out when the Corona hit. You know, so he should be back. The, the Phillies, always, though. Hey, Philly, Philly's always a sleeper team, but just like you know. You know, just like Dan said, they ain't no shooting. I mean, that's Philly. I don't put no trust in They let Reddit go. It's over. They ain't, they ain't no shooting. So I think the Eastern Conference Finals are going to end up being Boston. And, 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 uh, yeah, Boston. Yeah. I agree. And yeah. Milwaukee, they just got too much shooting, man. They, I mean, they, they, they're not going to beat. They're not going to beat. Boston's not going to Miami being a sleeper team. I like I like. I like that first round. Sleeper team. They are a sleeper team. Miami? Yeah. To do yeah, what? Get I out of like the first it. round? Nah, I they say, don't get out I the first round. Huh? What are they? What what they rank? Uh my Miami. Fifth, fifth or sixth. My, nah, Miami's fourth. That's what I'm saying. Uh Pacers. Pacers. So they'll be Miami, Miami, Indiana series. Yeah. 
I, I like yeah, Miami in this Miami, series. Miami, Miami, series. Miami, get that. Yeah, I like I like get Miami in this series. Get that. But you already know with me, it's it's bang bang like a gang over here, baby. LA like LA like a fan since ninety one, baby. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Look at Dave's face. <laughs> It's, it's bang bang like a gang over that, here, baby. Wow, <laughs> I, I, I can't be, I can't believe y'all two went to go with the Clippers, man. I, I, I can't believe that. I am well, a Lakers fan, but I'm not a LeBron fan. You got to remember that. No, Ra- I never, Ralph, I, Ralph, I, I believe I, that. I'm not. I'm not even looking at it from that perspective. I'm not. I, you think I'm making a decision because it's LeBron? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's why I made. That's why I made bias. <laughs> I mean, you know, you know, I got to, I got to look at the whole component, the whole team. You got AD there. I, you got AD, LeBron there, Q there. Who, who else you we know, got? We got, hey, you know, we got hey, Avery Bradley know, there. I don't, I don't know, man. You know, they got time. They got healthy. You know, they may bring Cuz back. I don't know. Damn, I need I need to think about that component about Why maybe not? potentially bringing Cuz back. I mean, in. I mean anything. But you got Deion Waiters. Like, I mean. It, well, hold on there. Hold on. Wait, wait a minute. Now we we not gonna throw waiters out there. <laughs> wait, 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 we wait don't throw waiters out there, man. Cause you know he gonna, he gonna roll up. Man. Waiters is a bucket, but he gonna roll up. But he's he's uh, he's a head case. Uh, he's another Lance Stevenson though. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's, he might be worse than Lance, bro. Yeah. So who, who who's worse, J.R. Smith or uh, Deion Waiters? Jr. <laughs> Jr. I think Jr. is better. What? Jr. Like he do what he wants to, bro. Shit. So, but so don't play no defense. You say Jr. Yeah. Don't play no defense. He played good defense for Cleveland in the finals the last couple times, though. I I feel, I feel like he plays good enough defense. Like you yeah. know what I'm saying. He, he's not gonna lock yeah, nobody down enough. or nothing like that. But he'll he'll play good enough to get bad good bad defense. But you know, so I I got gang, bang bang lucky game. Be legend got lucky game. And I can't believe well I can't believe Daniel went against us and chose the Clippers. Look, and, it's one thing to cancel. Be legend said. We got 18 games left. So if they finish the season, that's enough games for the Clippers See, to the pass the Lakers. Question, though. The question yeah. is, are they and only five games back? Are they going straight to the playoffs? Yeah, that's a good question too. I, I feel I feel they like have they, to they have to. I, I feel like yeah. they have to play some games to get everybody's feel back. So I say cap it off at ten games. That's, that should be that's enough time. That should be enough time for everybody to get their stamina back, their legs back, their rhythm. And then I feel like B, like you said, for for the the six seven. Well, I probably say seven and eight seeds. If it's if it's two combined, you play a best of three series. And then whoever win those series, that'll be that'll take care of the revenue for the fifteen for the extra five games that you lost, or uh, potentially the fifteen game season. So that takes care of that. And then whoever win those best of three series, boom, that's who got the seven and eight seeds. And we off and rolling with the Laker game. The real so problem is going to be for next season, though. I mean, if you if you finish if you start mid July, you finish the season, whether it's ten games or eighteen games, you're still looking at August before the playoffs yeah. starts. That's two and a half months worth of games. Yeah. yeah. So you're looking at almost October before the season's over with, and the season's supposed to start in October. They, no, they, they can't. They, they, you know they can't do that. They can't do it. Yeah. Nah, they they, they so can't they do it until December. Till December. Yeah. 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 To December. They probably start around Christmas. But then when they so that means that the finals are going to go to August to September again next year. I think, I think, <laughs> I think it changes. I think it changes the, the, the complexity of the NBA. I think it changed the whole landscape of the NBA moving forward. Now you in football season playing basketball. Uh, yeah, to, to, but, see, they, but they've always, but they've always wanted to start the season around Christmas. To, yeah. to go back yeah. to Daniel's point, what I think they would have to do is for one more back to back, and then two the All Star break. What they got like a week off now, so they're gonna have to cancel the week off for next year and just start playing those games. You know, getting games in there right there. So more back to backs, yep. and they're gonna have to shorten the All Star weekend break to you know make up some of those games so they can still try to finish. In, in July, but you know, this gang gang like a gang over here, baby. Uh, but anyways, <laughs> any, anyways, so you got wherever you got, LeBron go, he goes. That's his buddy. I don't know what you're talking about, bro. Like, like a gang since '91, baby. Him, Magic him, him Johnson, Pete, him, Pete, all of them. <laughs> Byron, uh, Byron Scott, you know James, big game James Worthy from North Carolina, Vladdy, Vladdy Divock. I mean, what you, what you do you, what, what you want? You want me? You want me to go through the list? Hey, my boy don't even have a Lakers jersey. 
My boy. Hey, I can't, hey don't, don't worry. I, I can't afford one child sport right now, so we ain't even worried. We ain't worried about, <laughs> we ain't worried about the Lakers jersey. Hey, you could have had one from back in the day, though. We, we was poor. My mom ain't have no money. Don't worry about that. We, 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 could, we couldn't afford one back in the day. You went to Brian Station, so everybody, that's all we wore. Sir. You already know. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that, that is a fact. That is a fact, sir. But uh, the NFL has been in a, you know, a little bit of a controversy. I know, Ralph, you wanted to touch on this topic right now. Um, the NFL, I think yesterday, tabled the conversation on whether to vote to have um, – you get ex- I think you get 10 extra draft picks. Are you scoot up 10 extra draft picks if you hire a minority to your coaching staff? So my question to you, Ralph, I'll throw it to you first. Since its inception, has the do you feel like the Rooney Rule has changed anything at all for the NFL? Absolutely not, and it's not going to change anything. And the fact that they have to put incentives into the Rooney Rule as far as adding draft picks or whatever they're going to do is it's ridiculous. I want to say it's like effing ridiculous, but I'm not going to go that far. But it's ridiculous, bro. Like you look at the numbers that everybody is seeing: sixty-five to seventy percent of the NFL is black. And you have three black coaches throughout the, as far as head coaches throughout the year. Then, like, it's ridiculous, bro. Like, it's like, what are we even talking about? Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, what are you going to tell a rich white man how to run his team, how to run his organization when he's making billions of dollars? What, what are you going to do with that? We, we, you gonna, what am I going to tell him? I'm broke. What am I going to tell him? I'm gonna <laughs> get you know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, it's serious. It's like, it's like you got to take it to the point that Colin Kaepernick took it. Like, you, like maybe some of the players need a protest if you really want change. But is that really going to happen? Are they really going to sacrifice their money, their paychecks to do that? But overall, it's a, it's it's a joke. We all know it's a joke, and that's all I'm going to say because I don't want to take it too far. No, nah, you can. Nah, hey, baby, this is beyond the game. You can take it as far as you yeah. want to. See, you, you ain't got it's no absolutely filter. ridiculous. Yeah, you, you ain't got no filter on here. Hey, B, I'm gonna ask you this because you might know. You you the more the financial guru of everybody. What was because it's my, it was to my understanding this is part of the reason why Jay Z was brought in to the NFL to help with this sort of thing. So what's what's Jay Z's whole play in this whole thing? Does he have any kind of play in this whole thing? He don't own yo, 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 that's a good question. I mean, I don't have the an answer to that. I mean, no, you know, NFL, you all knew. I mean, you all know. Y'all heard what Jay Z was supposed to be doing. He's supposed to come in and help, you know, deal with all these. I don't want to say racial issues, but let's just say minority issues and things along those lines. I I don't know what the hell Jay Z is doing. Hell, I mean, he ain't been- <laughs> <laughs> maybe he's just collecting a salary. I don't know. However, yep, another check. what I will say is this. The only thing I, I like about the Rooney Rule is that, you know, if it allows to get more, you know, minority ownership, if that happens, I don't know how, because because this is the deal, you only got X amount of people that can actually go out and buy a team. Right. Right. So remember, Puppy tried to buy the team. Didn't he try to buy uh, yeah. Carolina? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Carolina Panthers. Yeah, he yeah. tried. Couldn't do that. Wonder why. You know, he got the money. Right. You know what time it is. You know, so I mean, you know, you guys got to look at things from a big picture perspective, like Ralph was saying. That's even like with the New York Mets when J Lo and A Rod tried to buy. This is J Lo and A Rod. Absolutely. They got money. Plenty. But for some odd reason, they fell out. You know, they said, we ain't going to do this no more. You know, they just said it got too outrageous. You know, I. There's only a certain handful of people like your Jay Z's, your Shaqs, uh, your Puffies. Um, there's probably some other guys out there that I'm not thinking about at this present moment that have the money to actually buy a team. You know, um, I don't know if it's ever going to happen. Mm-hmm. You know, but, I, but I like the fact that you know there's some incentive. You know, to try to get the minority guys to buy it, but I don't think it's going to happen. I mean, if it does, I think it'll be Jay Z. You just have to have the opportunity. Like, where's the opportunity gonna come? Where they're gonna be able to? Yeah, them boys. I mean, them boys ain't giving. If, if if money's not the issue, then we already know what the issue is. So, when's the opportunity gonna present itself? Is the only way the opportunity can present itself is an expansion team. That's it. Yeah, that's yeah. it. But see, the other thing about it, most of these teams, most of these teams are generational teams as well. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. Mm. 
they stand within certain ownership, certain family type thing. Pass and right. I'm not giving that up. Like, on, do you ever think that the Dallas Cowboys are going to leave the Jerry Johnson, <laughs> Jimmy Johnson, whatever the hell is Jerry name? Jones. Jerry Jones. <laughs> Jerry Jones. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking about Jimmy. With the Jerry Jones family, that dynasty. Nope. Never, Jerry, Jerry be 50 years in the dirt, and it's still going to be owned by the family. <laughs> It never, it, 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 it's, gen, it's what we call generational wealth. Uh -huh. it's, it, it's never going to go anywhere. You yeah. know, think about this. Not to jump, but this is like Steve Ballmer. What was that fool's name? What was his name? The, the, the racist dude? Uh, Donald was? Sterling. Donald Sterling. Okay. We got to sell the team. <laughs> All right. This guy just walks in and just buys the team. Um, walks in. He's no, nothing about it. Hold on. We need uh we need a building. We I'm go buy. We'll take that one. <laughs> yeah. We'll take that one. Cash. <laughs> Cash. Not alone. Cash. Cash. Oh man, who I mean you tell me who 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 got that type of money? Now we know who got that money. There's only a few guys. And I don't even think them guys got it. Jay may be close. That's, yeah. said, that's the only person I can see doing to this, Jay. Jay may yeah. be close. There ain't too many guys got that type of bread. And he's still years away, though. Well, no, the, yeah. the only way I can see something like that is if they do like an ownership group type of joint where it's like Diddy, yeah. Jay-Z. Like three people. Yeah, wow. where they, they put their money together because, mm -hmm. like you said, you know, Jay-Z, he's a billionaire. But it's like, bro, it ain't, it ain't too many billionaires that look like us. So where are we getting these nope. other? You know, say he, him himself is not going to outbuild, uh, outbid. Let's say, uh, what's up, buddy that owns Amazon? Let's say he That's wants to get in the off. game. Yeah, yeah. he's not, he's not about to outbid him. You know, not by his damn self. You know how much Jeff Bezos make a minute? Yeah, he's hitting trillions. Yeah, he's hitting trillions. He's about to hit trillions. They, I just seen so, something about him. He's about but then, but uh, but I want you to look at this from a bigger perspective. Just think about the NFL NFL teams right now. Tell me, tell me an NFL team off the top of your head that you think that would be up for sale that is not a generational type team, meaning probably owned by somebody that's got generational wealth. Just, just give me one team. Maybe like the Jaguars. That's owned yeah. by Todd. Didn't he just buy the Jaguars like a he couple of years ago? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He just bought them. Kind of got his money from uh, from automotive. Yeah. What, what What about Tennessee Titans? They they they, they came. Remember, they came from Houston. So whoever that, owns them is probably oil money. That's that's probably Tennessee. I, I'm thinking that's of like the Jaguars. The only one I can think of for real. You ain't gonna get. You ain't gonna get the Texans. That's that's Chargers. Oil. No. And then no. That's, that, that, that's what, no. Arizona Cardinals. No. No, that's, that's that that's it. So Daniel, I'm, let me ask you this, you know, has the NFL's rooting rule changed anything? Do you see any kind of change due to the rooting rule? I mean, if you want to look at it on a small scale, I mean we got three head coaches. I mean, the only thing that it really changes to me is you get default interviews. A lot of them get interviews now because they have to. Like for instance, uh who was it? it was the Cowboys that interviewed Marvin Lewis. They knew they weren't gonna hire him. They just yeah, interviewed him by default. <laughs> so I mean, yeah. I mean, you can put that but on that, your resume, I, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I don't like that because I feel like we just have to accept crumbs. Like you saying that them just saying, just giving Lewis a, you know, what I'm saying opportunity, which he really wasn't an opportunity, and I don't like that, bro. That's that's right. the issue I have. With that's why it hasn't changed anything. But because they were saying they before. They were they saying were not they're not even considering them. So to them, it's like, well, at least we're considering you. But they're not, though. That's yeah, the whole not, thing. You know, it's like uh, show and tell. It's like, look what we did. Look what we did. But we didn't do anything. Like, but, come on, man. But answer said, this question. Drink with them and move with our you know why it's like that? We already own the player portion of the NFL. We can't own the coaching or the owner portion of the NFL, too. Come on, man. That's the issue. But, but, but answer this question, though. What co what African American, you know, is out there that deserves a job? Eric Ben Ben Enemy? Yeah. I think so. I think he deserved the opportunity. Okay, who else? I mean, 
I don't right. know, but 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 when you look at it, the grand scheme of things, I don't know each and every I don't know, uh, head, head well, well, coach well, well, that hiring. But you, but be you know to your, to go back to what you was talking about. You got guys like I forgot Buddy's name for for the Giants. He was a New England Patriots uh, uh, special Stop teams it. coach, special and he he coach. immediately got a job with head coaching Stop. with the Giants. The biggest you know head coach too. Yeah, like like that type of stuff. That's the oh, things oh, that people oh, are you, talking about. You, is, you. Yeah, you in New York. Cincinnati, the Bengals are Cincinnati. Bengals are trash. <laughs> they, they don't count. Right. Everybody, if you held a clipboard for Sean McVay, they interview you for it. Hey, hey listen, hey, well, hold on, hold on, Dave, hold on. You had uh, you had Marvin Lewis coaching there for how long? And he had how many losing seasons? Yeah, I, I agree. Who, who I agree. He, he went to the he went to the playoffs four times, Bill. I, he did. Yeah. But they're terrible. No, that's they're a terrible. terrible. It's, it's a terrible ownership. I, I was gonna say I I think the Bengals is more so ownership than Marvin Lewis. Like he could only work. To, everybody knows the the, the Bengals weren't going out of here getting these high price free agents to like you yeah. know try to make a competitive team. He pretty much had to build through the draft every single year. They weren't making so. Bark so I mean, you, you you think AJ Green, Andy Dalton, like those guys came from the draft. It ain't like they came to Cincinnati. So he only had he could only do what he was dealt because they wasn't paying nobody. I think if I think if Marvin Lewis was able to go out there and spend some money, I think the Bengals could have made a, a AFC championship game at least during his tenure. Oh, what? Uh, yeah, maybe not championship. They could at least want to play out there. Want to play out game for sure. Oh, well, right. at least want to play out game. Mm-hmm. No, I, I could have seen them going to the because you got to think the Bengals throughout Marvin Lewis. They weren't always trash. They had some pretty decent teams. They had yeah. Vontez Burfick. They had uh, uh, the cornerback. I can't uh, forget his name. Drake uh, Kirkpatrick. Uh, no, nah. yeah, and then of course you know AJ Green. Uh, Andy Dunn. Like they were deep. They were decent enough to where they could make a run in the playoffs. Hey, Who's I that? liked them back. T.O. ball that year. He ball when they had T.O. Uh, uh, T.J. Uh, Hootsmanzada. Hootsmanzada. You know what I'm saying? Carson Ocho Cinco. That's when I was. Yeah, that's when I was. Those teams could have made a run. And that's, that's, what, that's what that's what I'm saying. So 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 like, imagine. Those are the teams could have made a run. So imagine Marvin Lewis having some and money to put some some good. pieces around that. <laughs> no, we ain't going back that far. We we ain't going back that far. But see, but yeah, like, and then you you have the the like Ralph alluded to earlier. Yeah, my guy Peter Ward, <laughs> this guy. Maybe, but, but you have you have um, what, what's the Cowboys coach's name? Mike uh uh, Malarkey. My, no, no, the Cowboys. Mark Mike uh damn. Mark McCarthy. McCarthy. There McCarthy. you go. That deal was already in place, so it's like, what the hell are we what the hell are we interviewing people for when we already know who our coach is going to be? Listen. listen. You thought that they really seriously entertain hiring? That, that's what I'm saying. So what? What's the point of it even having the damn room? It, it didn't that's even matter whether they had to do the place or not. Let, let's just let's be candid about this. You think the Dallas Cowboys were going to hire Marvin Lewis? <laughs> it's really a joke, bro. I mean, seriously, really? No. Nah. And then. And- he never had a chance. No. Jerry Jones interviewed him because of what? Because of the Rudy rule. But see, that that's what I'm saying. We we had a lose lose situation when I say me, Absolutely. I mean my, I mean minorities. If we don't take the interview, well, we try to give him an interview, he didn't he didn't want to show up for it. But yeah. when we do he show up, he was never gonna get it. I feel but, like but, that interview went like uh Django. Samuel <laughs> Jackson and Leonardo DiCaprio. It's like you've been in this league for 30 years and I've been owning this for 30 years. We just we got a good chemistry because we just familiar with each other. So Absolutely. we just go. You, I know you're not gonna hire me, but we still cool. <laughs> yeah. Well, and all I'm saying is, and I don't know, and I know this comment that I make it could be completely incorrect because I just don't know. But what young African American coach, other than Airbnb, I mean, what African American coach is out there? I mean, I. I agree with what if you we had this like, three months ago. I could have told you right now. I, yeah, I'm just saying, I, I, and yeah, I could yeah. be wrong. I just, I, you know, but it's not a lot. You know, but when you talk about it, it'd be like, oh, we got this whole long list of up, 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 up and coming coaches that are just ready to, ready to just take a new position. But see, like, B, that, like, that's that's part of the problem, though, is that you have these. Like you said, we don't know who the African-American coaches are who are assistant coordinators, I mean, uh, defensive coordinators, offensive coordinators. 
But then you have these no-name white offensive coordinators, special teams. They, they, they get jobs. We don't know them, that's, but they get jobs immediately. Like, Prime example like, is hiring uh, uh, the Cardinals coach. The he had a losing record in college, and you just come on in. You got the job. Cliff, Cliff Kingsbury. Yeah. Cliff Kingsbury. I mean, it's just, like, it's just like college. I mean, what what African American coach in college could you you know see you know who they ain't you hear about Lincoln Riley all the time? We gonna we gonna go get Lincoln Riley, uh-huh. Lincoln Riley, Lincoln Riley. What what African American coaches do we have in college? Joker Phillips. Stop it, Q. <laughs> Stop it right now. Oh, wow. The guy from Stanford, David Shaw. That would David probably be the, the that would probably be the best bet. And even then, in that situation, he's not going to get a head coach and he's going to get a, a coordinator position. <laughs> Herm man, we're saying we can bring Herm Edwards like back. Herm, yeah, we bring Herm back. Yeah, yeah, I like yeah, Herm. You, you could do that too. It's a couple more. <laughs> so hold on, I'm 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 by, I'm about to bring Sean in here. Sean wanted to get in on this conversation. He was in the comments. Sean, what was your what's your think on you know has the NFL's Rooney Rule actually changed anything? First of all, I appreciate you for tuning into the show. Oh, no problem. Glad to be here. Um, look, I do think it need to be expanded to coordinators, um, not just to head coaches. Um, you know, the Rooney Rule did help Mike Tomlin get the job. Nobody knew who Mike Tomlin was before he he interviewed with Pittsburgh, and when they interviewed, they like, look, this dude's a star. So it's all about getting the opportunity and, and being in front of people who make those decisions. The NFL is an offensive-based sport. And now you see more offensive coordinators starting to get jobs. Um, you know, high power, you know, you talk about Clean, uh, Kingsbury and what he did with with um, quarterback of, of, of Arizona now uh, when he was at Oklahoma and and yeah, Colin Mary, and that's what the NFL wants. So you have to have you know when you look at African American coaches, a lot of them are on the defensive side of the ball. Yeah, mm-hmm. and so you so now most of them have to now you have to get some of these ex quarterbacks and ex offensive players into coaching and coaching on the offensive side of the ball instead of the defensive side of the ball. Yeah, that, that's that's a good point. So, Daniel, I'm, I'm gonna throw it over to you because I, I seen you commenting about that. Why do you think that we don't see more African Americans on the offensive side of the ball coaching? I can speak from personal. Ex- I mean, from personal experience, I just like hitting people. <laughs> and I mean, I'm saying if you come up and that's what you like to do, I mean, I get to read defense and just go crush somebody. And then, like, for instance, a guy that I would always – I'd like to watch play. He was maybe a star for a couple of years. I mean, he was a household name, was Joey Porter. Now, he's an assistant coach, but, of course, he's a linebacker's coach. I would really like to see him had uh, gotten a head coaching job, but years ago now, the time's passed. But the reason – I just think so, like, similar to what he said, how many – I mean, are you going to hire Jamarcus Russell as a quarterback and as a coach? <laughs> you know what I mean? You know what I mean? There's some people. You got here. Byron Leftwich out there. Byron I, 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 I was just about to say that Bruce Arians he he gave Byron Leftwich opportunity to be offensive coordinator. So do you he think it's for him too though? So do do you think that's a good point too? Do you think it's more on the, the head coach to start employing wow. these African American to as offensive and defensive coordinators to show what they can do? What about you, B? What you think about that? That it's more so on the head coaches. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it is, but again, it comes it comes back to. The basics, which is, you know, who's out there. Now, I'm not saying that they're not, you know, we don't know. You know, we don't know who's out there, but at the end of the day, they got to get somebody a chance. And that's what it comes, that's what it comes down to. Just like, you know, Mike Tomlin. Nobody knew who Mike Tomlin was. You know, you gotta you gotta give these guys a chance to show what they do know and what they're capable of. And the problem is a lot of times these guys don't they, they don't want to give these African Americans a chance. In the future, I think it will, though. I mean, because just think if you give the enemy a chance, how many op- how many op- jobs is he opening up for other African Americans? If you just give him a chance, give him a team, I think that there would you would have seen maybe a assistant black, you know what I'm saying, offensive coordinator. You know what I'm saying? I just feel like you have to give one person a chance, and I feel like everything will fall into place. Did, but but this is nobody a chance. I mean, what do you what will we do? This this oh, is the thing. This is the thing, though, bro. They give them chances, but it's like a dude. 
you know, uh, 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 you know, and I hate to bring this into the whole racial thing, but you know, uh, a white offense coordinator can get terminated, okay, and then he'll get a job with another team in a heartbeat. Yep. That's what I. Yep. That's, yep. And you know who I thought about when you said that is Jason Garrett. He immediately got yep. fired from the Cowboys. Got an offensive <laughs> yeah, coordinator yep. position from from the that's Giants. True. You know what I'm saying? And he was You want it done. <laughs> and to, 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 that's what yeah, I was getting ready to say. Off of, off of Ralph's comments is that when we get hired, we don't get a second opportunity. So we got to make this is camp. I mean, look, there's a lot of cronyism in the. It, it, no, go ahead. And, you know, it's not out. necessarily what you know is who you know. Mm. That's true. Too. Um, so and you, you know we we are really entering the air. You look at a lot of of, of head coaches in the NFL. And a lot of offense coordinators are ex quarterbacks, ex backup quarterback. Don Hart Eagle fan, Doug Peterson, ex uh, backup quarterback for all those years. And we have true, just true. now came out of the era where, you know, when we had in the 2000, when you had the Donovan McNair's Michael and Vick. the Steve McNair's and Dante Culpepper's and Michael Vick. How many of them have came into coaching? True. <clears throat> Not many. Yeah, I agree yeah. with that. That's what I was going to say know? about in the future. You can see Russell Wilson being a coach. You can see Lamar Jackson being a coach, but now it's more black quarterbacks starting to get starting jobs. But you also got to factor in: do they want a coach? They're gonna be rich. They may not even want a coach. But I can see That's more true. more black coaching opportunities in the future That's true. for that reason. I, I, I could to piggyback off of what Sean was saying. I, I don't think necessarily you'll get the Lamar Jackson, the Russell Wilsons, but what you right. will get is the backup black quarterback, like the Byron Leftwiches of the world, Absolutely. who will go into coaching Absolutely. more now. And I, I think. Yeah. I think Byron Leftwich, now that you brought that up, depending on how these next two years go with Tom Brady, he'll get a head coaching job because they'll say, okay, well, he did X, Y, and Z with Tom Brady, yep. so let's bring him in to see what he can do as a head coach. So I think Byron Tom will probably Brady be the, basically his co-sign, for real. I pretty agree. much, pretty, pretty, pretty much, that. pretty much. Man, I appreciate Sean. I appreciate you for tuning in on that on that conversation, on that topic. Uh, we could go on about the Rooney Rule for days, man, but before we get off of that topic, B, do you think they should implement – the you get you get to go up ten additional draft picks if you hire a minority. What's your thoughts on that? That's I mean, just a joke, bro. I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, it ain't. Are you going to use? I mean, why not? I mean, what the hell? Why not? I mean, that's you know. awesome, like, it's like, come you going you gonna hire me just to get the? <laughs> yeah, I mean, right and, that, and Daniel, Daniel, that's, that's, that's what I was, exactly, Daniel. That's I mean, what I was gonna say because you know, now you were sitting duck. It's like. I mean, and, and go back to B was saying is not to make it a race thing, but now you have white coordinators looking at the black coordinator head coach like, well, you only here just so we can get draft picks. Like, you don't even know what the hell you talking about now. Well, I would no to my advantage, got no pool. You can let me not do nothing, but I'm on your staff, and then I'm going to go interview for one of these college jobs and be a head coach somewhere. Well, I too. mean, you can use it to your advantage, but, yeah, I don't. I'm, I agree with Ralph. It's kind of some it. bull. Yeah, so we just still accepting crumbs, bro. That's so what 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 is. what can we Sean wanted to get back in here? So Sean, let me ask you this question before we get you off our, off of here. What can we do? Well not we, but what can the NFL do moving forward to make sure minorities get a first shot at getting a job opportunity, whether it be coordinators or head coach? Well, I think you know the NFL has a, a entry level position to work their way at coaching. You probably need about 30, 35, 40 percent. Of the people who entered that program to be black and and let yeah. them work their way up the system of uh you know being nfl quality control to you know and then get offense coordinator jobs up to head coaching job i think another thing you got to do is you got to get enough um uh, more african americans into the college head coaches and not just yeah. at the 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 kansas states and the rutgers and stuff like that you need more african americans at this be big time job at the Georgias, at the LSUs, at the Texas, uh, where not only they are they have the resources to recruit and 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 have the money, but can go out go also go out there and win. Because at the bottom line, it's a result of uh, it's a it's a result ordinated business. Only thing that really matters at the end of the day is you win it. And if you win it, everything's er, er, everything's good. But the moment you start losing I mean, look at Charlie Strong when he was at Texas. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. He never had a really, ha I ne never really had a fair Strong, chance. Never had a chance. <laughs> never really had a fair chance, but, Ran you know, 
he, he, he went 500 and he people got him out of there. Movie, it was bad he for him because he followed up after Mac Brown, though. You can't compete with that. You can't come in losing, and they used to Mac Brown. You know what I mean? Yeah, he lost. I mean, bottom line, Mac Brown. Yeah, not, but Mac Brown left the cover bare. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, he he, yeah. he, he, he went, listen, that boy, that, that he didn't win, and they ran him, they ran him out of time. Yeah, ran him out. In the hurry. I mean, what do you get? You know, they they, they already they already had they already knew his they already knew his replacement. They ran that man out of time. Mm. Andrew, Andrew, delete that comment. I wanted him. That's out why I was like, hey, Dan, you should have first say something to you. I was about to say something about your boy Willie. So y'all know I go to games, but I went to one Florida State game under Willie Taggart by default. But other than that, I didn't even watch him play because I didn't even think he deserved the job. He was I mean, somebody bought the tickets for me, and I went and got, went. But he should have never got the job. He didn't do anything. You, you shouldn't have wasted your, you shouldn't have wasted your time and win. They win. They won. <laughs> they, the good thing I can say about my teams when I go watch them play, they win. So, so, so you going to some Lakers games then, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, when LeBron's gone, yeah. I'm back. Man, we're I'm, back. <laughs> I'm back when LeBron's gone. We're not doing it. Hey, Sean, man, we, we appreciate you hopping on here, man. If you want to jump on another topic as we go through here, man, just click on the link. You can hop on here, man. We appreciate you getting on this NFL topic, man. Bad. All right, brother. So keep keeping up with the NFL theme, man. You know, we're going to switch over to Ralph's guy, Cam Newton. Cam Newton still unsigned for whatever reason. Don't know why. Not my guy. Okay, well, B, go ahead then. Go ahead. Go ahead. I mean, we already know. Denver Broncos. Oh, there, there's your answer, B. Who did Who did B Legend say? He said the Chargers. Where's it going? Uh, they actually interviewed uh, Anthony Lynn the other day, and he bigged up Cam Newton. He said they actually considered signing him. Um, <laughs> Look at then, face. He was basically like. When we didn't sign him, we knew we wouldn't bring in another quarterback. I mean, we knew. We I mean, were let's see. I mean, let's just go through it. I mean, where else you going? We ain't going. He ain't going to Denver. Y'all got too many damn quarterbacks right now. Uh, why are you going to I, I why honestly, you gonna, why are you going to bring a guy with that type of charisma, that type of cachet, that type of uh, I hate, you know whatever you want to call it in the Denver? You know what you, I hate to you say. Don't want them problem. You don't want them problem. Who? He could, he, could, he could actually, I hate to say it, but he could actually fit with the Rams. And this is the reason why. The Rams? I don't know. This, this is the, because, of what the, because of the style of offense. They're run, a run-oriented team. All he has to do is make a throw here and there on third down. So, wait a minute. You just, wait a minute. Just look, look at the comments. No, I get it. All yeah, I'm saying no. is, you just, now think about this. Now, the let's, Broncos let's can about. use them. They're not going to do it because of the money. But yeah, I mean, you paying Jericho all that money, and then you're going to bring that dude in. All right, now delete Andrew Morrell. Nah. We ain't even going to talk about his perfect mistake quarterback. I think it's been the real five years. Of I, mean, I mean, okay. Other than that, okay, so we said the Rams. Yeah. Denver. Okay, where else? I, I don't even think the Chargers. And the only reason why I say the Chargers is because – Cam Newton is not a bridge quarterback, and then they just take a homeboy from Oregon in in the uh, in the draft. Yeah, they did. Yeah, yeah, so so I don't I don't see them bringing it, and then they have oh, uh, the uh, Ty, yeah Tyrod Taylor. So I don't see them bringing him in because they're gonna be like, okay, well Tyrod Taylor, if anything, is gonna be the bridge, and then we got him coming up next. So we don't even really need you here. Why are we gonna pay you? We can pay somebody else on defense to fill that hole. So I don't even think you can play the Chargers. The only other option I agree with Ralph is is the Broncos. Really, I mean, come you believe on, in, man. You believe in Drew Lock? You you believe Thank in Drew Lock? I like Drew Lock. No, I mean, no. So so let me ask, not, let me ask you let me ask you let me ask you this then, Danny. Drew Lock or Cam Newton? Who you picking? Uh, how much do I got to pay Cam Newton? <laughs> 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 he can go on down to the Jaguars, man. He can, but they they just traded away Nick Very Foles well. for Gardner Minshew, right. so they they all sold on him. So that that's not going to happen. Him. Nick Foles, Cam Newton, <laughs> Nick Foles. Nah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, that's my point. Like, I mean, where, where is he going? I mean, like, there's nowhere for him to go. But that, that's the on? that's the crazy though. That the be. Did it, we, we have an MVP and a super a, team, a guy that led to a team to 15 and 1 and went to the super bowl and he can't even get a damn job right now. I mean, Crazy, yeah, man. You know, where he going to go? Go to the Broncos, I keep telling you. John yeah. Elway, he's a quarterback. He's you a know what? quarterback, but he but he can't recruit quarterbacks. It's That's terrible. True. 
He, I mean, he, I, I, I mean, what about San Francisco? Oh yeah, they need a quarterback. They they quarterback. I was say, Jim G's terrible, so I I see him going there. What, what about what about Jarrell's comment about Cam's ego being too big? You think that's the reason why he doesn't have a job? I would say that's oh, part no. of it. I would he, say that's a big part of it. He didn't want to accept game. the backup. He didn't want to accept the backup, bro. Yeah. Yep. Oh, like, put him somewhere where uh, New England could definitely use him. Yeah, put, New England. Put him somewhere where he has a legit quarterback competition. But but do you think he's gonna fit New England in style though? Because I, I think well, I don't. I don't think I don't. him and Belichick will fit together. But well, I don't even think that. I think Cam's not accurate enough to play in New England style because they're all about precision routes yeah. and things like. So and Cam likes True. to freestyle yeah. a lot. I, I don't think yeah. he fits in New England's offense. I think he can make it through. So basically, he's out of the league. But that's for for this season or for good. I'm asking you. Shit, somebody you know, take him, bro. Somebody take no, him. somebody gonna take him, bro. Somebody gonna get hurt. He'll get a job. Yeah, he'll be in the league. Ooh, what 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 about him coming in? Well, I agree with William though. Big Ben's hanging on. I by. like that. I like, I, like, I, like, I like I like I like Pittsburgh. I like the, I, I like, like that. Big Ben's one hit away from done. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. Sure. If if it, if there was any team, any team, the whole Mike Tomlin, Cam Newton, I like that kind of dynamic. So I do too. Yeah. Well, I, well, what's I, not, I mean, let's get real ignorant. What about Detroit? They could definitely nah. use them. Let's get real ignorant. What about Cleveland? Nah, nah I don't think they're ready to give up on Baker just yet. Nah. I don't think they're ready. Baker got to show up this year. He got too many. He got too many commercials and stuff. You know. Yeah, he got. He got. Okay. Baker got to show up this year. But I could yeah. definitely see Detroit. Yeah. Yeah. What well, he said, Andrew says, y'all giving too much love to uh, Nick Foles. He ain't never finished now, the season as a starter. Nah, he was I, I don't kid. like Foles. I never. I thought he was overrated. Oh, we had him. Trash. I know he's trash. Hold I on, but, I said Chicago should have signed a uh, uh, Cam. I, that, I that's what I was getting ready to see. What, what about I, Chicago? Who's they, they damn quarterback? I, I thought he was going to be there. Time. It's Mitchell like Trubisky, like you, you playing on. Mitchell Trubisky and Nick Foles are your quarterbacks. You you want to go forward moving with 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 those guys? But I, thought, I thought they would take Cam, and they didn't. They wouldn't get Foles. But remember, Andrew, the only reason you got a championship is because of Nick Foles, not Carson Wentz. Keep that in mind. That is true. Anyway, now keep going. That is true. So we got we got to see Cam Newton's gonna. You think Cam's gonna work? Want more than fifteen million? He gonna get more than fifteen. He can want what he wants, but he. Ain't <laughs> I mean, he he gonna get that one year year. Not this year he ain't gonna get it. So, so why why do you think a team like Chicago didn't want to offer Cam Newton the uh, opportunity to even come in? Or do you think they're just waiting to training camp? I don't know. I, I think they're confident in Mitchell. The style really of like offense they and everything. They can take him to the next level. I don't think they're confident in Mitchell because they're confident in Mitchell. They wouldn't have got, got Nick Foles. Yeah. They just didn't want to admit they, they made Nick a mistake. Foles. I mean, come on, man. I'm just saying. <laughs> I mean, Cam, 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 Cam was the perfect fit for them. Perfect, yeah, like trans, perfect trans. fit for them. I don't know. The style of offense, he can run. Everything was perfect for Cam. Throw on the run. I, I, I agree. I agree. So let me. Does, so, that, does, that, does, that ego, does that ego fit in Chicago with Matt and Nate? He ain't got that's no choice. That's, he a ain't got no choice. City, that's a big enough city to feed his ego. So I, mean, I agree, but let's see what said. Foles didn't get us to the playoffs and need to stop. <laughs> he played the uh, second game. Who won the playoffs? Well, we have no argument with the Eagles fan, bro. Let hey, it go. Who, 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 who talking about the damn Eagles? <laughs> <laughs> Andrew, hey man, he, he's more than welcome to come that. on here if he, right. he got something. He got something on his chest. Go ahead, Daniel. He brought up the regular season, but you won the Super Bowl in the playoffs. Who won the playoff game? Exactly. Exactly. Right, Nick, Nick Foles did. Win, win the Super Bowl. Who, Nick, who almost got him back to the NFC Championship a second time? Nick who Foles. Went, who, who, who went to right. Disney World? Nick, Nick Foles. Foles. <laughs> Everybody. The, Nick the whole thing. <laughs> you wish upon You got to let that go, bro. He, he said you got to let that go. Matt Nagy was Mahomes. Newton was for this offense purpose. I mean, that's what we're saying. Hold on. Yeah. <laughs> hey, 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 uh, Daniel, this one I'm gonna let y'all two handle this, man. So, Sean, you know, he's an Eagles fan. Go ahead, Sean, let him have it. <laughs> oh, oh. Man, I cannot let you sit there and talk oh, about God. Carson Wentz like that. Oh, I can't God. let you do it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Carson <laughs> Wentz, you know, the year Super Bowl was the MVP of the league before he got hurt, was he not? No, he wasn't. It was Tom Brady. Oh, yes, he was, bro. <laughs> oh, Tom Brady. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm let I'm gonna sit back and let y'all handle it. Go ahead, Daniel. Do your thing, bro. 
I mean, I ain't got nothing to say. My quarterback took us to the Super Bowl. He actually – You ain't got to say nothing. Hey, he actually went, went to the playoffs. He and won, that's yeah. Right hey, that's what they won up? Look, yeah. look I, that's the I am forever grateful to Nick Foles. All right. Carson I know you Wentz I know is, you is the, the now and the future. At least you can get he Nick will bring Philly. another quarterback back to you bring another Super Bowl back to Philly. Can promise you that. Won't. Y'all be waiting. Watch. Another, uh, no, they got, watch. Years. They're gonna get another Super Bowl because they get they just drafted a quarterback from uh, Oklahoma. Stop it. <laughs> Jalen Hurts. Talk about it. Jalen Hurts. Talk about you know. it, Daniel. I got another one coming. He's a hard worker. Andy, uh, Andy, hold on, man. On the let, let me get to some of these comments real quick. Let's see, Andrew. <laughs> Andrew, you more than welcome to come on here. Let's see, your your QB choke. I guess that's to, to Daniel. Your QB choke. So did yours. That's why he was on the bench. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah. Hey, what happened in the playoff game last year? Wentz hurt. I, Wentz hurt again. I'm, I, the I, Broncos I, ain't been. Hey, B, I'm with you. I'm gonna just drink my drink, bro. Show just went south. Uh, my team ain't in the playoffs. Let me drink my wine. <laughs> Hey, oh, so, hey. who, so who is your team fine to know? Just Court, for me the Denver to know. Broncos, the Denver Broncos, brother. Cortland Sutton is oh, my guy, man. though. Cortland Sutton is my guy. To, to the Cam, not to cut you off, what about Cam Newton to the Raiders? Yeah, you know what? I, I like that. I like I, that. I do like that. I like that. I do like that. I like that. At least bring them in for 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 time. Like so that. so <laughs> so I'm, I'm still tripping off of Daniel and Sean and, and Ralph with this Eagles thing, man. So Why you, are we talking about the Eagles? <laughs> I mean, hey, it's, it's, it, it, it's your 2021 Super Bowl champs. So why not? Uh, you wish for thinking over, brother. What you drink? Watch. Watch. You Watch. Yeah, out of here now. <laughs> you are. You are <laughs> What the hell? We got another. We got another PD here. What, what's going on? I know. We, we, we got, got another, another PD, bro. <laughs> oh man. Hey, 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 uh, Ralph. This comment's for you. Broncos fans not allowed to talk about Wentz. Uh, you you want to comment on that, man? Lock that. Lock that on up. No, no, hey, my team ain't been in the playoffs since Peyton Manning. Ain't much I can say, my brother. <laughs> But but back to Sean in this uh two thousand and one uh Illy uh Philadelphia Eagles. Twenty one. Uh, twenty one. Yeah, I'm I'm sorry. I'm sorry, sir. Two thousand and twenty one Philadelphia Eagles in a, Super Bowl in champion. a, NFL champions. You play you playing that on Madden? Is that what you playing on? That's what no, 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 in real right life, now. bro. In real life. I mean, look, you going? We <laughs> added some weapons on offense. We have got some corners. We drafted some corners. That defensive line still nasty. Well, right. we gonna come out. We 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 gonna come out of the NFC East, and Carson Wentz is gonna show everybody why he was the number two pick overall. Why right. he was gonna be MVP before he got hurt and win a Super Bowl. So, you, you know, know what? what? You know what? He said, he said one thing. He, he said one thing wow. that was true. He said one thing that was true. What was that? What was the one thing he said was true? Nothing. I ain't heard nothing. I ain't heard not one. Yeah, thing they, 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 they gonna win the NFC East. Yeah, they probably will. Oh, oh yeah, that's that's, yeah, yeah, I give you that. Yeah, I got, I, I, I got y'all winning ten games. I, yeah, I, I get you. Hey, and, and you know what? Ten games is enough to get you a Super Bowl. Get you in the tournament to win a Super Bowl. Look like at Andrew. We seen it before. <laughs> hey, you're right though. At least you know when Wentz goes down, you got Jalen Hurts. So you you do realize there are other teams in the NFC East the, like like Tampa Bay, right? Cowboys are the best team though. Cowboys are the best team in the NFC East. <laughs> hold on, hold on. We got some hold on. Cowboys will win the NFC, says you know. Uh, all right, look, yeah, look that's man. family right there. And you, look, you got family beef them. going on now. I agree with them though. You think the Cowboys going to the NFC? Yeah. If they got Dak as quarterback, you might you go look at everything they added no, to no, what no, they no. already you had. Know, you know what? I will say this. I will say this. I think Dallas has added some really, really good pieces. I really do. I just I'm just not a Dak fan. Go get your night quill, Andrew. It's time for you to go to bed with the comments like that. <laughs> I, I, I'm just not a Dak fan, man. I'm just I'm not a Dak fan. I'm not a Dak fan either, but when you put when you give him everything in the world, he ain't got no choice but to succeed. Plus, you give him a Super Bowl winning coach. Well, I mean, you was winning nine games with Jason Garrett. Well, yeah, that, yeah. that's true too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, all right, they better pay him. They better pay him. It's the Cowboys. Who are you talking about, Dak? Yeah, he's talking about Dak. Yeah, no, they, they, know, they got Andy oh, They better good. pay Dak. That Dak gets. I'm tired of. Hey, they just of. like y'all though. Oh, they ain't got to worry about it. They just put in the backup, and he can go win. <laughs>
<laughs> oh man, Daniel, hold on, man. I don't, I don't know what you've done, but everybody wants to get on here and talk to you, Daniel. Man. <laughs> hey, I needed this though because me and him talk so much shit to each other, but we never talk face to face. I see him on PlayStation all the time, and I don't never hop in this chat or nothing. So go ahead. All right, so so Andrew, man, that, that's coming through. But shy man, like I said, you more than welcome to keep coming on here. As long as you don't come on here talking about them bull uh, Eagles, man, you you good that's with me, bro? Say. You, nah, you can't don't, do that every time. Then, then don't talk about my Eagles, then, and don't talk about my Cardinals. <laughs> in with that, all right, the, bro, the Eagles ain't too much to talk about, bro. Like, <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> but shy man, you more than welcome. Appreciate you for hopping back on here, man. Like I said, we'll go through all it. Right. You want to hop back on, man? Louisville Cardinals. L one L one C four explosive. Oh, he, he said, I, know, he, I know how I feel about Louisville. Y'all y'all look here and got the button. You, the, the cuss button, but you ain't you don't need the no, cuss button. No, 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 no. not the he, cuss button. The, the jet button. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! So, oh, we got some bum ass. There we go, <laughs> Reggie. That's what I like Talk to hear. Talk about man. Talk about man. My guy right there. Wait, man, how did this turn into the Eagle Show? Hey, oh, I, hey, new subject, bro. Yeah, I, I, I was about to wonder the same thing. Be like, how did we all of a sudden get on the? the, the so he we went to the Eagles to the Cardinals. What the fuck? This is, why, this is why when they get off on these LeBron tens. You, you know what? That, that was my bad, B. I lost control of the show, man. That, that, that was my bad, bro. The, the, the shit just went left, and I just let him rock with it, man. But, uh, B's, B's, B's face was priceless, bro. When you, when you edit this, bro, get his face when he said that. Oh, man. my God. <laughs> True blue all day. What is he talking about? Uh, hold on. Let me, bring it, let me bring it back up. True, True blue all day. Uh, Damn Kenny right. Was, must be a UK fan, man. And he got oh, Lakers yeah, colors on. Right. I'm entertaining his comment. He got Lakers colors on. So he yeah. said, I'm yeah. entertaining. I mean, I'm a, yeah, I, you know, I, you know, I see the purple and gold, so that's why I keep, yeah. you know. But, but I just want. Oh man, they got kind of into a family fight. <laughs> go pack, go. Hey, there you go, B. As your as your Packers comment. I mean, you know, it's a Ryan. You know, best quarterback in the league right there. Oh, Kenny, man, you you with the UK smoke today? You on the wrong show well, today, hey, baby. Kenny, yeah. I knew I liked you, bro. You, you, day, bro. <laughs> you, you the, yeah. Hey, Kenny, you was you was doing good, and then you did that, bro. Yeah, you 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 was all right with me until until that UK come, bro. bro. Yeah. Take a damn drink. I, I know it. I, y'all done made me drink all my damn do say Listen, listen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, you know, you had turning. If we talk sport, you got to go to UK. What? Yeah, I don't know how he did this English thing. That's my fault. I won't even entertain it no more, man. I, I, I'm, like, so, you know I'm not gonna do that. We're not gonna entertain UK. We're gonna keep it moving. I'm, yeah, I'm gonna keep it moving because we're gonna talk about you know Horace Grant and Jordan, you know the beef that they got going on with each other. You know, um, Jordan talked about the traveling cocaine circus, and then you know the jo- the Jordan rules book. Jordan Jordan pinpointed as Horace Grant as being one of the people that gave Sam Smith, who wrote the book, one of the um, the inside behind the stories about everything that was going on with the Bulls in the 1991 season. So, B, I'm gonna throw this over to you first, man. Do you think Jordan is a snitch? Or is Horace Grant being too damn sensitive about the whole situation? Well, you know, I, first of all, it goes both ways. Your, your, your uncle is just ridiculous. <laughs> my uncle, my uncle no. Shay. Uncle Shay, Shay. My uncle right. Shay. B, where's your, where's your uh, statue at me? <laughs> my, my uncle, no, we are we are not doing that today. We're we, we not doing that today. <laughs> we're not doing that today. Uh-uh. Your, your, your uncle, man, is just utterly ridiculous, man. Not here. Every it's day. True. Every I mean, day. you know what? I like Sam Jordan. I really I do. do He's my but, tight end. He's I mean, I mean, my God, man, that dude, man, that, that dude. He won't stop, bro. <laughs> yeah, he just won't. Oh, I mean, you know, he, he it's, just, it, it's a family thing, like, bro. Y'all wouldn't oh, understand. The, the LeBron <laughs> tea bag show. Right, I'm, I'm, gonna let, I'm gonna let it go. Look, it's, man. It's, here's the deal. Um, first of all, going back to the original comment, um, you know about um. You know, you, Horace, Jordan Smith, yeah. the, the, comment, the first comment that came out about, you know, Jordan telling the people not to feed Horace Grant. Now, wait a minute. Now, 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 let's, let's be honest about this. You just come out. Y- y'all just lose a game. Or y'all win a game. Whatever. You getting on the bus. I'm sitting up there. And I look at the and, and lady. And we on the bus or whatever. And I tell she trying to get food out. I look and say, don't get cute nothing. He ain't playing. You know, he sucks. Like you, you a grown, you a grown ass man. Ain't no way in the world that come on I, now and tell this woman not to give you no food. 
and it's gonna be a problem. You know, damn well Mike was just talking shit. Just like in that documentary, he was talking shit. He was just talking shit. They gonna make it seem like that man just don't you give him no food. Don't you give him no food. Come on, man. It, it just it, it, it's not real. I, I I don't buy it. I don't believe it. True. You know? True. And then this whole thing is, is, is Mike a snitch? I don't, I, mean, I don't think he's a snitch. I mean, what? Because they, they had the cocaine circus? I mean, he didn't say who it was or whatever the case may be. Exactly. They brought it up anyway. So they already knew. Yeah. That's what everybody called it. Yeah. 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 Personally, yeah. Personally, I feel like Horace is just being sensitive. That's just how I feel. Absolutely. But, you know, according, according to uh, um, Shaq, you know. Okay. You know, well, you know, we we from we you know we from we you know we from the same town. You know, we, we from Middle Georgia. We from Middle Georgia. You know, and from Middle Georgia, you know, we don't you know we don't play that. You know, we you know we, 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 we got something to say about that. You know, I'm an alpha man. We would have had a problem. Yeah, we gonna have yeah. You know, we gonna have a problem. That's that's, that's how we do in Middle Georgia. You know what I'm saying? You know, we 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 about to play minutes down the mile. You know, down that down, down. You know, so I know I know what horse. I know how horse feel. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Before before I let before I let Ralph and and uh Daniel go, Daniel here, here you go man. Is oh, this my man Daniel. What up? What up, buddy? What's so on, so go ahead go ahead Drew get it off your oh, chest right, about. Is this another issue? No, we're not doing it. <laughs> hey, we were supposed to be off. Look, he could not bro. Hold on, hold on. Yeah. You gave bro time to go change into some eagle scare. <sighs> no, no, no. I was down in the basement. I had to come up here and get the good reception. Oh, okay, bet, bet, bet. So yeah, go, go, yeah. go ahead, get it off your chest real quick. <laughs> why be, why so, be taking set off? Go ahead, get it off your chest. You got all that to say about my quarterback, but you ignoring yours. Just take a seven mil a year pay cut. That's, that's what I want. I wanted, I wanted him to do that. Yeah, that's what your quarterback needs to do, though. Learn. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I'm trying to get you to realize, man. Y'all need to do that hey, too. Hey, I like the Hurts pick, and if you read the article today. It, the packages and stuff, I, I'm okay with it. I wasn't at first, you know. You saw that. In the yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I was wild and not when I was. I was mad. Uh, but man, he's gonna be all right. Uh, I promise you. You know, there's that concern, man. I, I, his injuries, you can't deny. But man, he, he's got the right people around. Look what he did last year: four thousand yards, not one receiver over five hundred. And you can hide about Ertz and Goddard, but I mean, that should be easy to take away if you ain't got no other weapon. And, and watch out you for Miles Sanders. End it with that. Watch out for Miles Sanders this year. That boy about to blow up. Who? I got a notification about Miles Sanders, but I didn't get to read it yet. But uh, who's that? Yes, they had an article on who, running who, back. Man, I think he need. I think he just. I saw a tweet today. I think he might be talking a little too much, but he just need to keep working. He's gonna be special. Who's Miles Sanders though? Can, can somebody clue me in? Who's Miles Sanders? Penn State running back. Running back. Hey, I'll be right back. I gotta grab my charger. Computer's gonna die. Yeah. Running back, we, we run out of topics. Well, no, we, Miles Sanders, you know, the article of Miles Sanders today is that he's ready to step up and take the number one RB, you know, oh RB one role, you know, and take more of a sort of, uh, um, you know, place in the offense. Trash, but it, but in anyways, we we gonna keep talking. <laughs> Miles Sanders is trash too. If you ain't got on the computer red, and we you trash. But anyways, we are gonna keep talking about the the horse. Uh, Andrew, we are gonna keep you on here for a little bit, man. We are gonna keep talking hey, about the opinions on horse too. You okay, so we 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 gonna keep you on it, Ralph. What was your thing? Do you think Jim J was a snitch or is Horace Grant too damn sensitive? I, I totally agree with B Legend. I think Horace Grant is sensitive. My issue, I think. Is I heard somebody say earlier is that they brought back up the story with Horace Grant snitching in to Sam Smith, whoever wrote the book or whatever. So I feel like he's in his films a little bit that the old news guy brought back up that he is the snitch. He's the one who told the back stories and stuff. So Horace Grant is he's sensitive. I don't think Jordan's a snitch. He didn't even say any names. He didn't say this person, that person. He just said what was happening, which was reality. It wasn't a lie, it wasn't a snitch. It was what it was. Hmm. So what, what about you, Daniel? I'll toss this up to you before we let our special guest chime in. Do you think Jordan was a snitch or is Horace Grant just being too damn – is Horace Grant basically his damn feelings? By technicality, he was being a snitch, but you can't really tell – give new information if somebody already knows this. But if it was me in the hotel room, I'm doing – I'm married and I'm in here with prostitutes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, damn, bro. <laughs> 
You know what I'm saying? This is I done I done made it 26 years. My marriage is good. And then my wife, <laughs> now my wife gotta find out I'm in here with prostitutes. But, 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 but he never did, but he never dropped any names. He did not drop That's the name. whole point. But but but, 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 but hold on to Daniel, but to your point, B, yeah. is that it was during Jordan's rookie season. So all you gotta do is look at the roster yeah. and see who was on the team. Yeah, you know. You got you got you got eleven other people on the team. Bro, your so, wife's gonna assume one okay, of so If I'm on that team and my wife look at me and say, "So y'all had process?" Man, she got with me. I was in <laughs> right. That's going That's gonna. I mean, that's how this is going down. Yeah, I mean, right. I could have been getting you know, you know, the whole yeah, uh -huh. guy, I'm gonna tell her. Man, I, I wasn't there, man. Wait, what are you gonna say? Be nah, that was Mike and them. I don't know what they were talking. I was, I was I studying the playbook. I say it wasn't me. I wasn't there. I was in my hotel room. I was gonna look at me and say, <laughs> and I'm looking around and say, mm -hmm. and then going back watching the documentary. Go ahead, Dan, finish what you were saying. <laughs> but I mean, my technicality, yeah. But I mean, it was part of the story. They actually brought it to him. They were talking about at the time. They were calling him the traveling cocaine circus. MJ laughed about it. He was like, I mean, I really don't even know. Then he was like, you know what? I do remember this one time he went into. There was this one time, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, he wasn't really. Of course, of course, what? It's the thing about me. I learned this a long time ago. If I didn't do something, you can accuse me or whatever you want to. I know it I didn't do it. It don't even bother me. It don't bother you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It bothers him a lot. So, so you saying yeah. him, him getting defensive is kind of like. Maybe a sign that maybe he oh. did say something. He might not have given everything, but he probably yeah, he said did, something. Man. Now this Isn't is person I still three hundred million people watching this. So I mean, that's a lot different than me. Maybe a thousand people thinking something about me versus three hundred million watching this on TV. So I mean, I can kind of see it. The perception, yep. you know, what yep. I'm saying might bother him. But well, yep. what about you, Andrew? Our special guest. You you think Jordan is a snitch? I was horse green just being too sensitive about it all. Man, Ralph pretty much took the words right out of my mouth. Um, you know, he kind of, to me, just validated the stuff with Sam Smith or added validation to it, uh, you know. And then he went on and told Shannon Sharp some stuff. And Sharp said he got more that he ain't going to share. He's going to let Horace do on his own. Uh, and that's Sharp being respectful, you know. But uh, to me, you know, he, Horace told on himself. Uh, yep. By, by having a problem with it. And, and just like, you know, I respect what Craig Hodges did with the Bashiki and the White House and all that, but he also telling on himself coming out saying he got a problem with Jordan saying something about the cocaine show. It, but I come out and have a problem if you didn't do nothing. Right, exactly. <laughs> if you wasn't in that room, like Bruce yep. said, if you wasn't in that room, it wasn't me. What you looking yep. at me for? Yep. No, I'll sleep. No, even if you was in that room, <laughs> even if I was in there, I wasn't there. Like, even, yeah, I was gonna say, even, <laughs> even, even if I was in that Scarface style with everything on my nose, I still wasn't in there. Yeah, I was right. My my whole thing is is that you know, TV to a national outlet and cry about it, you're just admitting that obviously yeah. you had a problem with it because you were in that room. Yeah. My my whole thing is is like you know I I hate to say this but like Uncle Shay say two things could be true I think Joy was telling a little bit too much and Horace Grant is a little bit too sensitive about everything because like I said bro if you didn't say nothing to nobody then what's the point of getting all up in arms about everything like I didn't say nothing to him and then you know you leave it at that and then the, and then the B to piggyback right. off of what you were saying earlier. I think people are making too much of this whole Jordan was was a bully thing. Like we all hoop, we all know how the lingo goes out there on the court. You know what I'm saying? And, and it's it's typical. You talk to your teammates like that. Yeah, like, yeah. hey man, you playing yeah. like a such and such today? Come yeah. on, bro. Yeah. Like yeah. that's just typical conversation. And I think I think for the first time, America is actually seeing how practices really, really are. Yeah. And yeah. now everybody's like, oh my gosh, like they. And it's like, no, that's if you if you play sports, you know that. Practices go like that. Sometimes they even more intense than that. You almost getting ready to square up with your teammate, yeah, with your best friend, let alone your teammate. Yeah. You, see, you see what I'm saying? So I, I personally, that's why I don't agree with I like Uncle Shay. I, I personally don't agree with Uncle Shay about him saying Jordan was a bully. It's just that. Oh, you don't? No, because I don't think Jordan would meant anything bad. Like he really think Scarborough, oh, you a hoe, you a hoe. Like, nah, it, it wasn't that type of thing. It's like, man, you playing like a hoe right now. You see what I'm saying? I just said that because I thought you agree with everything that your uncle. Shay yeah, I, I, that's not nah. me. I mean, Uncle, uncle Shay. I think you don't agree with Uncle Shay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I thought you agree with everything he said. I mean, I like Uncle Shay. Gonna call him tonight. He gonna be mad at you. 
No, and, and see, I, I think I think what what, left, what got left out of it is Scott Burrell and Michael Jordan's relationship. They don't know that maybe they got that type of relationship where they can joke with each other like that. Well, Scott Burrell right. ain't taking it serious. But you got right. Shannon Sharp who looks at it and, you know, like like Daniel said, 300 other million people looking at it like, dang, he's talking to him like that. You don't know. Maybe Scott Burrell talks back to Jordan like that, but yeah. that just got edited Absolutely. out. You know what I'm saying? We don't know. That's the type of relationship that they probably had. Scott Burrell came up later. Jordan came in in 84. Scott Burrell came in in 96, 97. People were talking more shit in 96 and 97. Above the yeah. rim, then came out, stuff like that. So, <laughs> that don't bother you as much. You see how Al Iverson was talking shit? Gary Payton. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Gary Payton talks crazy. You just going to talk back or you going to go and let your game talk for you like uh, my man did for uh, – Isaiah Ryder, he's like, I ain't talk a lot of shit, but I bust your ass on the court, and you yeah, go, oh, yeah, you know what I'm saying. Hey, I liked his interview on, uh, on the road, bro. And that, and that's why I said for, for for those who play sports, like that's just typical practice, dog. That's just how it goes. And yeah, Jordan and Steve Kerr got into it, but like name a practice where stuff like it doesn't happen, where you, you and your teammate. You know, teammate, you know, face to face, got your fingers like it's, it's almost gonna go to blows. And then you tell coach, now nah, put us on the opposite teams to see what like it, it happens in every single practice. Yeah, like, bro. You know, like people gotta For stop sure. thinking, you know, Jordan's all this bullet. Nah, he ain't a bullet. He was just like, that's, that's I responded happened. to Shannon Sharp early. So Shannon Sharp was replying to everybody, but I was like a little bit late because I saw the video late. So I added Shannon Sharp. And so he's going through making smart comments to people. Uh, twisting the narrative. So somebody was like, we get it. You don't like Jordan. And somebody else was like, <clears throat> I mean, Jordan was just trying to win this, this, and that. And then Shannon Sharp responded back to him like, oh, I get it. You like you like to be called those names. You know what I'm saying? The names that you would call them. So I was like, so I, I, I forgot exactly what I wrote, but I added them just to sit here and respond to me. And I was like, I get the respect then. I was like, but maybe if your guy LeBron wasn't so nice, he would have six finals wins instead of six finals. Talk losses. about it. Talk I, about I waited it. for a minute. I said, I'll right. give it about five hours and see if he responds. I don't know. I don't, if LeBron went so soft, maybe it has six stuff. He wants to be right. everybody's friend. No, I, I, would, I, I would say, I would say it's soft because, right. you know, right. Tim, Duncan, right. Tim Duncan led in a in a soft, I guess you want to call it soft manner, and he still got five yeah. rings. I, I think that, right. but he had Greg Popovich yeah. to get into everybody's ass, so he didn't have to get in nobody's ass. Yeah. LeBron right. James. Right. He probably needed to get in a couple of teammates' ass, but he didn't have the coach to do it. So, no. you know what I'm saying? It is what it is. Where you got Jordan, he ain't got no problem with let you know, hey, look, bro, you need to pick your shit up. Like, well, I ain't got time to play with you right now. I'm trying to win this sixth ring. Like, what are you doing out here? You, 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 know, you, know, Q, I, you, know, you know, Q, I do got to say something to you, though, because I thought about this the other day. <laughs> Thinking about LeBron's <laughs> team. And, uh, What's wrong? Oh, my God, bro. You know, okay, man. You know, when we talk about putting together the super team, and you know, mm -hmm. you, you know, you were talking about Jordan and his teams. I mean, I mean, let's go through these teams for a second. Oh my god, mm. <laughs> let's do it. We're gonna go backwards, we'll go from 98 we'll go way back. back so, be, be legend ain't getting shit. So, <laughs> Jordan, the, the Bulls had Tony Kukoc, uh -huh. Dennis Rodman, mm -hmm. Pippen, and Jordan. And everybody else. Now, everybody else. Dennis played defense, Kukos, you know, and then you have Pippen. And okay, that's pretty much what your, what your three P team was. Okay, uh, and then you go back a little bit four. Oh, I'm sorry, you had Luke Longley, you know, Bill Winnington. Don't forget him. Don't forget uh, him. You know, and a couple other guys. And then we go back to the first three P. We had. John Paxson, man, Pax. Mm. You know, BJ yeah. Jordan Pippen and Horace Grant. No, and, don't forget and, about and, BJ. And Craig Hodges, too. Don't forget about oh, BJ. Oh, oh, Bill Conrad. <laughs> Bill Conrad. Everybody else. Yeah. So now I want to go and talk about Miami. <laughs> <laughs> so LeBron, D Wade, Chris Bosch, Ray Allen. Shane Battier, Birdman, the Donald's have them. Do I, I need to keep going? Mm -hmm. No, I don't. I don't mm -hmm. need to keep going. Mm -hmm. You know, Mario Chalmers. You know, yeah, he had a whole bunch of people. This motherfucker said Mario Chalmers. No, I'm just talking about your team. I'm just He's just saying role players, Q. I'm not talking to you, Ralph. I'm not talking to you. I'm listening to him. Go I mean, ahead. He, he was a starter, right? 
I can't remember. Was, that, was, that was so far long ago. I can't remember. Definitely hit some big buckets. I, we're not talking to you, Daniel. We're not talking to you. Right? We're not talking so, to you. What I'm going to give you credit for is one thing. Oh, shit. And that is Stephen <laughs> Cavaliers that beat the 72 and 73 and 9. 73, 73 and 9. 73 and 9. Because all you really had was Kyrie and LeBron. And they came back and won three straight. Other than that, I don't ever want to hear you talk nothing about teams. Because LeBron had a stacked team. And everybody when he did have a stacked team, he wanted to come in and do what? Fire everybody. Then he went out there and made that trade and got uh, who did they get? They got Jordan Clarkson and Larry Nance Jr. and all that. Did they win that year? They brought Dwayne Wade nope. in too. They ain't win that year. No. Nope. Nah. Nope. He came in and said everybody suck, right? He said, well, no, no, no. He didn't say that. He said we were too top heavy. <laughs> right. I, you know, I, I, you know, I just, I just want to make sure because you know, MJ, you know, he, took, he just, MJ just took what he had and, and just won. And he didn't right. lose. Oh. Right. I just, Can't I just want to. I mean, did, 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 did I miss anything, Ralph? Uh, no, sir. No, uh, sir. Dang, I miss anything. Nah, you covered it all to me, good brother. So, I, 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 I just want to bring that. Are you, are you, are you, you finished? Are you done? Are you finished? Are you done? What um, he made I'm a good point, and he ain't jump teams either. What's that got to do with anything? Uh, I'm just talking about. It. I just wanted that point to Wait, be what, put in. What's that got to do with anything? I thought, the, I, I thought the object of the uh, basketball was to win, uh, not how you get there, but to win. Uh, I don't. Uh, I, uh, so what you're saying uh, is Jordan uh, should have left and went to play with Magic. I got I, you. Hey, if that's uh, what floats uh, his boat, hey, I can't tell Michael what to do, but hey, you know what I'm saying. You know, I just gotta have some integrity, it, man. I, 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 need, I need to get that off my chest because you're not. You, okay, I'm, I'm gonna let you. Okay, it you got it off your chest. It was, it was heavy on me, Q. I need to get that off. Okay, so, so, so. You got to say, look, here you go. go. So, <laughs> you, you brought up Ray Allen, right? So are we gonna act like Ray Allen was the Miami? I mean the Milwaukee Bucks Ray Allen? Are we gonna forget that he was year seventeen? Ray, Ray Allen, Allen got you a championship, son. Absolutely. Right. Okay. So Ray Allen got him a championship. So did John Paxson and Steve Curry get joined the championship? They played a part in it. Oh, okay, okay. So so as long as y'all play, as long as y'all admit to that, I ain't got no problem with saying Ray Allen. But they, they, well, they, also John they Paxson, not, they're not Ray Allen. They don't. They they're not Ray Allen. <laughs> But I, but, but, at, at, but hold on, but hold on. At that stage in Ray Allen's career, was he the same guy? Was he a specialist? He was still he was still a good he was and he was still he was double start, he's a start on every team in the league, man. He was still double. He wasn't a start on Miami. Because they had Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosch. Hey, I ain't got I ain't gonna do with that. If you that good, you're gonna start. I ain't gonna do with he that. He still was double figures. He was, I, a, he was the fourth option double figures, Q. Well, hold on. That that season that he's talking about. Ray Allen averaged nine points a game, okay. so he, he wasn't he wasn't in double figures. <laughs> Mario, <laughs> Mario, Mario, Mario Thomas was nine point nine points a game. Shane Battier was four points a game. So you bringing up these names as if they was really contributing? Now nine points. They weren't contributing. Shane Battier was a defensive guy. They weren't contributing. Q. Y'all bring Come up. Yeah, that's, that's no different. Hold on. So so. And Kurt, like they was contributing. Y'all bring up. Hey, All like, they helped. They bring up. So, Josh, they bring so up Ray Ron Allen the same way, and Ron Harper was only averaging seven and two. Yeah, he had help. That's my point. Is that y'all make it seem like fourth option? Y'all make it seem like Ray Allen, Shane Battier, and these guys was putting up buckets for LeBron. Meanwhile, nine points and nine points and four points ain't putting up buckets, my guy. No, 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 no. nine (laughs) points and nine points. When you got somebody averaging twenty six, you got somebody averaging twenty four. Uh 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 uh. uh. LeBron averaged twenty seven. The Dwayne Wade averaged nineteen. Chris by sixteen. So let's let's not act like they was both in the twenty. They averaged that, but how many shots were they taking per game? Uh huh. And that was the worst year. Shots was they taking? Well, tell Jordan to pass the ball. Tell Jordan to pass the ball. Everybody can get shots. Tell me, tell me, Chris Bosh's and Dwayne Wade's averages the first two years when they play with LeBron. The first I, I had to look that up. I just went to the season that B was talking about. Okay. I, 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 I know. I, I, I did one all set of of them. Beats and two yeah, sets, all of them. And then second set. I did six years. Because you, you can't say Ray Allen because Ray Allen wasn't there the whole Miami tenure. So you can't you can't say I'm that. Just, I, I, I'm just picking you. I'm talking about your LeBron teams, man. Your LeBron's y'all talk about LeBron and had no help. LeBron put together a super team. How you how the hell you put together a super team with a guy in his 17th season? Like I'm, I'm y'all going off of names alone. He was 
Come on, bro. bro. Come on, bro. Stop. LeBron, the first year LeBron was there, Dwayne Wade averaged 25. You can look it up. Yeah, but but see, but see, he brought up the the Ray Allen. So hold on, hold on, you you talking about two different teams? Then but they lost. So I'm bringing up a year that they lost. They lost the championship. <laughs> yeah, his third option averaged twenty and ten. That was his yeah. third option. How do you lose with that? Yeah, because you want to know why they because lost? the Dallas because Mavericks LeBron, were a better team. LeBron was in his feelings. LeBron the Dallas. Hurt. So so y'all mean to tell me that Jordan will lose with that? Do you huh? think Jordan will lose if he had a third option to average nope. twenty and ten? No, nope. yep. hell no. Nope. Yep. Hey, yep. That's our, that's our time today, folks. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know why? You know why? Because Jordan ain't gonna have a third option because you know why this thing stays on lock. So Jordan ain't gonna have nobody that's gonna have a third option that's gonna average twenty because he's gonna take 30 or 40 shots. So ain't nobody gonna have a third option to get 20 points. <sighs> so that ain't gonna happen on Jordan's watch. This dude here. All right, bro. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just saying, y'all y'all bringing up Ray Allen and Shane Batty like these guys was Jordan just like had to do it because they did not. Well, he have, didn't. The best third the option they had was, was like he's cool coach. Matches, That's the best third option they had. We don't know what Tony could do because Jordan was taking all the damn nah, shots. So. Tony was cold. Tony was cold. I like Tony. Yeah, Tony was all right. Tony was all right. <laughs> <laughs> he's all right. <laughs> you just you just can't, man. You just can't. They you can't. they help they help Curry Jordan. <laughs> but man, we we we've been on here for almost two hours. We gotta get up off here. I told y'all when he made that comment, that was our time for the day. Yep, because I'm not I'm, I'm not doing this with you because Ray Allen averaged nine points, Mario Chalmers averaged nine points, and Shane Batty averaged four points. And you talking about that's a super team? What? The? Hey, but in the playoffs, he averaged fourteen. What the? F? What, what? Who? Who did? Ray Allen. Well, I'm, I'm shit. Not my, not my, not my Ray Allen. Your Ray Allen. <laughs> not my Ray Allen. Not my Ray Allen. So, him, hold on. I'm gonna give this guy opportunity. What's up, Chase man? What's up? Who's who's your favorite player it's in the, the NBA? That's your the favorite player, not your daddy's. Who's your favorite yeah. NBA player? LeBron James. That's my. That's my. All right, guy. So, 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 in your opinion, after what you've seen. In your opinion, not my opinion, in your opinion, who do you think is better, LeBron or Jordan? In your opinion. Is that a right or wrong answer? It's just your opinion. Yeah, it is. Don't listen to Q. I mean, LeBron is still one of the best. So is Jordan. But who got choose LeBron more? Okay. How, how old is this young man? He's 14, right? <laughs> He's 14, bro. There's nothing to talk. He don't even know who Jordan is. Hey, 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 Here's my point. The reason why I did that was because it just validates the the entire thing that you would never be able to really, when you talk about this GOAT thing, you would never really be able to validate. Right. You know, who is it who who technically is the GOAT? Because it because it changes. Like we'll average 50 points in a game. I mean, in a season, yeah. In a season, yeah. They when when Wilt was playing, they had to adapt the defenses, you know, to deal with Wilt. Bill Russell won how many? What do you want? Twelve? Eleven. Eleven is a player. Twelve altogether. Yeah, twelve. I mean, so you know, so you got that era. Then you got the Bird, and you got and you got the Magic era. They 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 just did their thing. Kobe gets lost in the shuffle. Kobe's always going to be lost in the shuffle because yeah, he comes in between Jordan and he comes in between LeBron. Mm-hmm. So he's never – he doesn't – see, because Magic had Bird, okay? Jordan had the Pistons, right? Those mm-hmm. were his route. Uh LeBron had Boston and KD and everybody else, the Warriors. Kobe didn't have a route. The Spurs. That was oh, his what about the Kings? Not really, though. I'm giving it to the Spurs. It was like Shaq. Then you got to think. Kobe's first playoffs. Kobe's first playoffs, the Spurs put them out. And they battled every year on to 2000. I, and, I would say the Spurs yeah. more than the Kings. I mean, I mean, so so it, it, we can debate. We will always debate this until the end. It's, it, it, it's, it's just ne- it's never going It's never going to matter. It's just that they were these dudes are just different players with different mentalities. They got different skills. LeBron is a physical specimen that you've never ever seen at the you know at this point. Just like Jordan at that time, you never saw that dude at that point in time ever. You never saw yeah, anything Ralph, Ralph like, like, like 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 mm-hmm. Magic Bird said. They were like, "Who is that?" They don't know who this dude. They never seen anything like it. Which is yeah. like you never seen nothing like LeBron. 
And so these these kids that are growing up right now will never, regardless of what goes on, they will never, unless they become historians of the game, they will never have a true understanding as to how good Michael Jordan was. No. It's, it's, just, it's that simple. It's like that simple, honestly. It's LeBron. LeBron's going to go out in a couple of years. Then it's going to be who's? Zion. Steph, KD, Zion. KD, you know. And, and, and it's just going to keep going that way, and it's going to change. So we'll look at this 20 years twenty years from now, and they're going to say it's whoever's playing in is going to be better than the ball. Yeah, of course. LeBron, of course. Jordan may not even be in the conversation. Nope. No, I, 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 I agree with you. No, I, I nope. agree. That's, that's, that's like, you know, before we wrap this up, that's like rap music. Our generation, we can say Nas, Tupac, or whoever, because that's who we, these kids today yeah, say, yeah. you know, Takashi you 6 9 to? You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Hey, listen, so this ain't even no damn music. I don't yeah, know what they Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So they, they could say, oh, nah, this is the greatest. And I'm like, bro, like, I've never even heard of this dude it's before. And then they'll be like, who is Nas? I've never heard of Nas before. And it's like, okay, exactly. we're done here. Yeah, we're done. Yeah, here. we're done. Yeah, <laughs> we're yeah. done. <laughs> so yep, on yesterday, before I, wrap, before I wrap this up, on yesterday's show, we, we started this game, right? Uh, I got these deck of cards right here. And this deck of cards got questions on them. It's thirty-seven okay. cards in here. Uh -huh. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna okay. go around the panel. Everybody picks a number. I'm gonna <laughs> stop at that number, and I'm gonna pick that card out, and you gotta answer that question. Everybody's gonna do it. <laughs> Ralph, I'm gonna start with you. Pick a number, one through thirty-seven. Five. All right, one, two, three, four, five. Damn. <laughs> so, so this, this is your question right here. Yes, what sir. is something you hate but you wish you loved? LeBron. Oh, I hate that. I like <laughs> what the? I'm the yeah. LeBron. LeBron. As as weak. I'm gonna let you off with that. Daniel, pick a number. Twenty-four. Damn. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four. <laughs> Oh, shit. <laughs> Daniel, when were your parents most disappointed in you? <laughs> Talk about it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Let me see. It's a couple times. Yeah, it's been a couple times. Let's just say. We out on Heady. I'm going to keep it, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm going to dumb it down for the show. <laughs> Just say when I brought home a bad report card. Man. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh, no, bro! I can't, I, I can't let, I can't let you off with that because everybody done brought home a bad report card. Uh uh. Name, name a time that they was disappointed in you. Uh, hey, yeah, because you know we gotta leave this for the when we get big. You know we gotta leave this for the behind the scenes stories. Uh, like <laughs> <Jordan. laughs> That's, that's a damn shame. Then you, then you said when he brought up a bear port card. I'm gonna I'm, I'm, I'm hold you to that. B, right. pick pick a number. You have prepared. I'm not gonna be symbolic, man. To go with 23. All right. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. Is that seven, why you chose 24? 9, 10, yep. 11, 12. I was gonna 10, go with 8. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. B. Oh, man. <laughs> it's just wow. So your question is, what's something I would never guess about you? Damn. <laughs> hey, don't be PG-13 either. Mm -mm. Nah, something, something that you would never guess about me. Yep. Okay. I used to show dogs. You used to do what? Show dogs. Oh, show dogs. Okay. Oh, damn, I would have never yeah. guessed that about you. Yeah, I got, got a couple. Uh, got a couple champions. Couple of champion matches. I'm not that surprised. I, I, I actually am. I never figured you for a dog person to be honest. I wouldn't have never thought that. Yeah. No, nah, he's he's amazing. 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 He's yeah, I believe it. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about that later. So what about you, Q? I'm I'm gonna pick I'm gonna yeah. pick six. I'm already, you know, pick six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So what we got here. <laughs> what the fuck type of shit? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm gonna I'm show y'all my question too. So my question is, what is your guilty pleasure? 
Oh, if you answer this truthfully, then I'll go back and answer re answer mine. <laughs> so that wraps up Move today's on. show That's beyond the game. <laughs> we can wreck you on up out of here. <laughs> Oh man, a guilty pleasure. Choke him off. Don't let him just say it. Choke him off. Uh, what'd you say, B? Choking them off, strangling them. Go ahead. Say it. I, I, that's where I was getting ready to go with it. A guilty pleasure. Right. XNXX.com, bro. That's my guilty pleasure. <laughs> it is what it is. Uh, <laughs> hold on, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> it is what it is, bro. Yeah. <laughs> say, bro. XNXX.com is my guilty pleasure, bro. Hey, <laughs> Smoke on it, man. <laughs> it is what it is, man. It is what it is, bro. Hey, that reminds me of the library, man. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. That was crazy conversation. That was comedy. Oh, uh, man. But, yeah, that, that I, I got these cards, man, and I thought it'd be just you know, something to add a little spice to the show, like, let people know I like our personalities a little bit, answer these questions. So I'll probably start doing that. <laughs> Hold on. What's up, bro? <laughs> and you said send me that link. I got you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't, don't even worry about it, Andrew. I'll hit your inbox and send you that link, bro. That's a plethora of stuff in there. But anyways, <laughs> be great going up out here. B, I appreciate you taking, you know, almost two hours at your day. Daniel, same for you, Ralph. Same for you, man. I appreciate Anytime, you guys. Bro. And like I told y'all before the show, man, I, I appreciate y'all today more than ever because y'all helped me get through some stuff, man. So I really appreciate this. Everybody, please make sure you go like, share, comment on this show so we can continue yeah. to help this thing grow. And also next week, you can hop on here as well. Sean and Andrew, appreciate y'all for hopping on here today. We get ready to get on up out of here. We want you to treat somebody how you want somebody to treat your mama. We out of here. Shout out to Sir. 22, my boy President Duck with the hats. Well, there it is right there. Hey, yeah, promo. Real, man. With the plug, <laughs> man. I need them. You need that, B? Oh, yeah, I need them, boy.